All right, we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Monster Hunter World Iceborne PC live stream. We're going to be working on my optional quests. Nancy Pelosi just submitted my optionals to the Senate, and today we'll be voting whether or not to impeach them or put them in impeach, I should say. Now, to get started, uh, I kind of was doing a bunch of stuff right before the stream, and I did not get a chance to sh share the session ID. So currently, nobody has gotten access to the session ID. Here it is right here. I'm going <laughs> to actually type it down myself and share it in the Discord. The negative sign? What? Negative ZMB? Jesus Christ. Alright, let me go share this to the Discord as well. For for once, you guys in the stream are seeing it before anyone else has. Uh, jump over here to... Here it is. Patreon LFG. I will share it with them. They're supposed to get it first, but... Uh, <laughs> not today. <laughs> Not today. All right, now I'll share it with the session ID chat. I might as well do it right now. And then I'll just type it into the chat room as well. All right, there we go. Only Florence says, don't forget, you can have all fertilizers of each type active. Then you just do soft soil every five quests. Yeah, I, that's actually cost ineffective, actually. I don't remember why I came to that conclusion. Uh, but there's no reason to have all five of them active at, active at the same time. And the problem is, if they run out, if you happen to forget them... You would spend a bunch of money trying to reset it when you really just never need to do that. There's a lot. Oh, excuse me. That must be the mailman right now. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, it was the UPS guy. Did you guys know I order like hundreds of dollars of Pokemon cards like almost daily at this point? Okay. So, here we are. <laughs> Let's go ahead. We're going to travel over to Celiana. Go to the central area. Ong Hutut says, I'm watching your live stream in class. <gasps> what? You better be doing your homework. Noobs, brec noobs for breakfast says, here's the mail. It never fails. It makes me want to wag my tail. Let's go ahead and post an optional. We'll probably be doing this one by ourselves because we got the session ID out so late. Oh, so for the, uh, for the snack fun today, I've turned it into a little fun thing. We did this before. You guys, when you make a donation, you can vote to put my optional quests in a peach. Or you can vote to not put my optional quests in a peach. So you're basically voting yay or nay on in a peachment. Let's go ahead and have our meat platter. And, and we'll see if my optionals get in a peached. It'll be really fun. Go ahead and depart. We did get somebody who's bra. Yeah, so that's what we're doing today for, this, for the uh, snack fund. <laughs> Pelosi would beat Trump's ass in a mass wrestling match. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, we already paid for food. What am I doing? Should we get energy drinks uh, for the uh, this particular fight? I don't care. Better be more Cosmic Eclipse in that Pokemon order so I can pick some up. Uh, Apexing the Apocalypse, we actually had Cosmic Eclipse yesterday. So we you could have purchased them yesterday, in fact. Um, there's a ton of them. We should have about three booster boxes, roughly. I bought the blister pack, so I have to kind of build them and put them together. Whee! <laughs> right, smack him in the head. TGC, what do I do if I have a small brain? That is actually a very interesting question. I was reading how people who are born low IQ never really get smart. Yeah. Uh, you can become knowledgeable, like you can educate yourself, but your IQ apparently is a static uh, number. It doesn't really change over your life. So if you're born kind of dumb, you just kind of stay dumb. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> people take about uh, people talk about like uh, you know financial privilege. How about IQ privilege? When's that gonna be a thing? Hey, that's not fair. You're born smart. <laughs> 
David, quick, don't know a quick 100. What? Is David even here? David's not here. I missed it yesterday thinking it was all going to be rocket boosters, which I'm not too sure on. Uh, Apex the Apocalypse, if you actually wanted my, like, professional opinion on card investing, uh, I would actually choose the rocket booster packs over the cosmic eclipse packs every day. The reason the cosmic eclipse packs are so enticing is because they're actually really affordable, right? So you can purchase modern cards for a reasonable price. The reason the rocket packs are actually way better is because they're, they've are they been out of uh, print for 20 years, so there's no more of them. In other words, there's a finite number of them that are well known, Nintendo's not printing any more of them, and their value pretty strictly moves upwards. Uh, you know, if we go into a recession, it might dip for a while, but once we come back out of the recession, again, the cards will just move up in value because of their rarity. The Cosmic Eclipse cards aren't actually that rare. That's the thing. Rocket first edition booster cards are extremely rare. There's like a very limited number of... Uh, for example, if you were to pull first edition holographic magneton and he graded a 10, you might actually make about $4,000 from that. Okay, so you're talking about buying a pack for $100 because all the... That's all that's left, by the way, are the medium packs. Buying a medium pack for about $100 and you do have about a 1 in 18 chances of pulling the Magneton. And then if it happened to be a PSA 10, you would just make a crazy amount of money from that. So it's all a little bit of gambling, but, you know, there's gambling when you open the Cosmic Eclipse packs as well, right? That's how it works. When you buy a modern pack, it's always a gamble on what you're going to pull. When you buy a vintage pack, it's a lot more calculated. And again, the packs are actually... The packs and the cards inside are actually rare. Cosmic Eclipse cards aren't that rare. They're, they're, they can be rare, like the best cards in the pack are somewhat rare, because everyone wants them, but uh, the vintage packs, almost everything's rare. For example, I sold a, I, I talk about this, uh, you can look it up on my eBay channel, I believe, I think you can see what sellers have sold. I, I not too long ago sold a Dark Charmeleon first edition for $75. That's an uncommon card. That's an uncommon card. It sold for $75. So the idea of buying a pack for $100 is not even that much. It's, it's actually a fairly good price. Uh, and I do it for you guys for fun, but to build my YouTube channel. I do it to build my YouTube channel. Otherwise, I probably would be better off just strictly opening these for myself. Uh, let's see. Court says, I accidentally called Shar Ishval the tentacle thingy, finger finger of death, and now my friend won't stop laughing. Somebody says, or maybe I'm just really stupid. Monty says, I just agree with you, G. I think people with low IQ are that way because of self-ignorance. No, no, there's really been a lot of actual studies on uh, IQ, and when it comes to IQ, what you're really talking about is your hardware, right? So you're talking about your physical body, and it turns out your physical body doesn't actually change that much over time. Uh, in fact, what your physical body mostly does, when we're talking about your brain, you actually, it kind of degrades, so your brain kind of gets worth, worse over time. It doesn't really get better, right? So your brain gets old. It's kind of like your heart. Think of your brain like your heart. Okay, your brain's made up of neurons and connectors that help the neurons communicate with each other. And they have a certain capacity to them. It turns out some people have healthier, better brains than you, just from genetics, kind of like your heart. So your heart, you can have, you can be born with a really kind of shitty body and you're gonna die young because you inherited those genes. And then you can be born with like a really healthy body and you're gonna live longer because you have really healthy genes. Well, your brain is part of that. Your physical brain is part of that. And this is where your IQ is coming from. Some brains are better, they're faster, uh, and they're healthier. And as you get older, your brain doesn't get healthier. Your brain actually, again, it, it kind of disintegrates. It gets older and it degrades. So over time, you kind of lose IQ, actually. You get stupider as you get older. That's why old people are so slow. You ever seen Joe Biden uh, try to say something coherent? He can't anymore. When he was a younger man, he could. When he was a younger politician, he could say things very coherent, well, fairly coherently, but now he's an older man and he stumbles over every word. That's because his brain's actually lower IQ than it used to be. He's literally dumber than he used to be. And that's true for Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi and all of them. They're very old and their brains aren't running like they used to. But that's okay. You can be very knowledgeable. You can know a lot. You can know a lot and you can be well-practiced and wise. Uh, but, but by IQ, your IQ does not change over time. No, it, it, if it changes, it gets worse. It doesn't get better. So that was one of the interesting studies I was reading about it. You can't really improve your IQ any more than you can take your heart and turn it into like a better heart. You've got like a top shelf for your heart for how healthy it can be and then or, or like a ceiling. It doesn't get any better than that though. It only gets worse. So pretty interesting, right? So somebody can be born really smart and you can be born stupid uh, and I would call that brain privilege. <laughs> and uh, I want to tax you for it. <laughs>
they have brain p privilege. I need a compensation. <laughs> I need a welfare program because I wasn't born with good IQ brain. Doesn't Joe Biden like to sniff kids? He does actually. It's really, really unsettling and weird. Uh, that's not to say it's necessarily sexual. He might just be like this weirdly touchy person, but he does like to sniff kids and touch you and touch... I, I don't know. He's really weird. He kisses people. I'm not like that. I hate being touched. I hate being touched by strangers in particular. It's really weird, and I, uh, I guess I would do it because they're trying to normalize it. Like, oh yeah, this is just customary and normal. This is what I do. But I, I never like to be touched by strangers. They can keep their nasty, dirty little fingers off of me. What do you think of Yang? Uh, I think that Yang is racist, first of all. He, he uses racist stereotypes in his arguments. And I think handing people out $1,000 per month uh, is like giving a uh, drunk a beer, basically. So if you're bad with money already and somebody hands you $1,000, you aren't necessarily going to spend that money very well. Uh, same with like uh, somebody who's got a addiction problems. Well, if you just give them a bunch of drugs, it's not like they're going to make good choices with the drugs. So if you spend all your money on, I don't know, like, let's say you spend all your money on luxury cars, luxury phones, uh, weed, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know how expensive weed is. I've never bought it. Maybe you spend your money on lottery tickets. And then Andrew Yang comes around and he punishes all of our super genius, innovative companies. And then he says, I'm taking your money that you could have used uh, for reinvestment and for growth and for, you know, being really intelligent. And, you know, as a reward for being really intelligent, I'm taking that away and I'm giving it to the guy who buys lottery tickets because that's why he's consistently poor throughout his whole life. And he voted for me because I told him I'd give him $1,000. Uh, not only is it sort of a subversion of the idea of liberty, in my opinion, but he, he says all kinds of racist things like Chinese people are better at math. I'm different from Donald Trump because I'm Chinese and I'm good at math. Like, what are we supposed to ascertain from that? Are we supposed to ascertain that maybe, uh, who was the black guy? Bookie Cora? Are, are we supposed to say he's not as good of a candidate as Andrew Yang because he's black and therefore not as good at math as Yang? So it's a super racist comment. The, the leftists have become very racist in their ideas. And uh, it, the idea of giving people $1,000, I've talked about this in the past. What do you think happens to the cost of goods when all of a sudden every, everybody has an extra $1,000? What do you think happens to the cost of goods? Do you think they stay the same? Or do you think the millionaire geniuses, billionaire geniuses who operate you know, your local Walmart and your local McDonald's, they go, oh yeah, everyone has an extra $1,000, we're raising our prices. Or, you know, it essentially it causes inflation for, for those of you who just want a very simple explanation. Similar with rent prices. Oh, can't afford your rent? Oh man, everyone's got $1,000 now. What do you think happens to the cost of rent? It just strictly goes up. It doesn't... <laughs> do you think the cost of rent's going to go down because everyone can demand an apartment now? No, everyone can demand an apartment for an extra $1,000 and the cost of rent just goes up along with your new $1,000. So when I hear about Yang Gang's $1,000, all I see is a socialism but packaged in a different manner and he's a very racist man david says have the ultimate long six build i can gladly list my skills there's so many skills in it damn that's a lot of skills i refer to people as nibbas and make ironic racist jokes at the time but i feel awful whenever i think someone might be offended by that racism is bad is that hard for everyone to understand racism is bad dean says inflation goes up but uh, that's exactly what i think uh, i think that pretty strictly inflation will go up redistributing money from people who know how to invest money well to people who don't know how to invest money well is not good for your economy. It's strictly bad for your economy. You're getting so many of these. Still high rank armor? That's right. Who needs master rank armor when we can rush through everything in high rank armor and basically play with the same level of competence? And we still have masters. Look, we got crit eye, crit boost, weakness exploit, uh, and we have master's touch and elementless. So we have everything we need. The only thing I might be missing is Agitator. So Agitator may be attack boost, uh, but I don't think I could get the Brute Tigrix chest right now, so probably not that even. Uh, so yeah, we're in a good position with our build. What we're mostly missing are maybe luxury skills, which uh, at this point with my skill in the game, I don't really need them as much. I guess they would be nice. They would be nice. Uh, those and Agitator would be the main skills that we're missing, but you can just use Dragon Armor, unsurprisingly. Dragon Armor's always been so good. It's sad that we just go from Dragon Armor to Master's Touch with the Teostra Armor. It's like, nothing's really changed. One, 
to. Boop. Look at that. Somebody's running that as an ogre heavy bowgun. Cute dogo. He does not give everyone a thousand dollars, though. He wanted to give ten families who can prove they need the money. I know. It, I get that. It's, it's basically socialism, though, right? What's the difference between giving ten people who need a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, and just redistributing people's taxes? There's no differences. Andrew Yang is just like all the other liberals right now. He's a socialist, and he's a very racist socialist. He's he's literally using his race as an Asian man to try and tell you that you should vote for him. He's doing two things that are really, really, really bad for our democracy. First of all, he's saying because he's Asian, he's a better candidate. Second thing he's doing is he's saying I will literally give you a thousand dollars if you vote for me. Vote for me. So what I would call this is selling votes, and this is a, the opposite of uh, democratic. Uh, that's the opposite of democracy in my book. And the Founding Fathers were actually very concerned about candidates doing that. They said the reason we're going to create the Electoral College is so that a candidate, a charismatic candidate, cannot purchase the election. So that's exactly what the Founding Fathers were talking about when they wrote the rules for how our dem democracy would be run. It's one of the key reasons we have an Electoral College, to make sure that a charismatic leader cannot literally just sell the country out and uh, become the leader. So they, they had done a bunch of studying of previous civilizations like the Greeks and the Romans. By the way, for those of you who don't know a lot of, um, uh, you know, about uh, maybe the forming of America, that's why we use buildings that look like the Romans and the Greeks. Did you ever think about that? The reason we use Latin and the reason we use uh, Roman style buildings is because literally the founding fathers were mimicking what they learned from the Roman Republic. But they were also trying to avoid the mistakes that the, Ro uh, the Romans made and what caused the fall of Rome. They didn't want America to be the next Rome. And so here we are, we're in the future, and Andrew Yang says, vote for me, I'll give you $1,000. Is is probably one of the worst ideas I've heard in a long time. I'll give you $1,000. All you need to do is vote for me. It's great for you. It's like, of course, how, how else? <laughs> it's like, that's the easiest thing I've ever heard of. Like, just vote for me, I'll give you $1,000. It's so blatantly buying votes. Uh, I can't, if he won on that message, what would that mean for the future of everyone's country? If, if a politician could come in, and tell everyone, I'm just going to give you like a thousand dollars. What would that mean for the future of, of elections? It would be really toxic because the future of elections would pretty much definitely be people saying, well, I'll give you a thousand and two hundred dollars. I'll give you a thousand and three. A thousand and three? That's not enough. You deserve a thousand and four. That's what the future of elections will sound like if Andrew Yang wins. So it's not good for your country or anyone's country. God Terror Boy says, I want money. There's a lot of money, God Terror Boy. You get out there and earn some. Somebody who finds emojis great says, election once hard. The time was annoying. Uh, Alice says, more importantly, why does cheese and bacon go so good together? That is a great question. It is because they're full of oil and your body craves oil uh, because oil gives you a lot of energy the same way that sugar gives you a lot of energy. So that's the same reason why people can't stop eating sugar. Your body naturally craves sugar because it, it believes that it needs a lot of it to survive. But in our modern in our modern times, you don't actually need that much energy because you're probably sitting at a desk all day. Not everyone, but but plenty of people have desk jobs. I have a desk job. So you don't need that much sugar. You don't need that much uh, saturated fat and, and oils necessarily. So you really should just have, uh, you know, eat those in uh, moderation. And you probably know that. Also, by the way, bacon has something called sodium nitrate in it, which was recently graded as cancerous as smoking a, a regular cigarette. That's how dangerous sodium nitrate is. It's considered directly related to uh, getting colon cancer. That's answer, cancer in your ass, all right? You want colon cancer? You want ass cancer? Eat sodium nitrate and bacon. It's terrible for you. I'm going to trust the experts on it. <laughs> At the very least, I don't even need the sodium in the bacon, right? You don't. There's too, way too much salt in uh, bacon. That's all it is. Extremely salty, extremely fatty meat. And uh, the sodium nitrate apparently gives you cancer. So I'm all done with bacon personally. I have a uh, uncured turkey bacon occasionally, but I don't like regular bacon. People like Andrew Yang, Lord Kilrath is saying this, is the reason why I'm not leftist anymore. Ideals are trash and hypocritical. I agree. So when I was in college, I considered myself a liberal. And uh, ever since then, I have definitely left the liberal party. I think a lot of people have probably become swing voters or they have left the liberal party. In fact, I think if Donald Trump wasn't such a, a giant asshole and if he didn't do things like, uh, you know, kind of sneakily make it sound like he want to withhold funding from Ukraine. If he didn't do that kind of stuff, I think that he would be a shoe in because our economy, in fact, is doing very well. And uh, 
just nothing really crazy has happened under him. So he would be a shoe in as a candidate because a lot of people I think in America really, really do like the idea of having low taxes and staying a, a, as a competitive country. And I think it's a very vocal minority that, that wants open socialism. I don't think it's that many people who want socialism. Like, yeah, there's always going to be um, a fair number of people on the left that are open to new ideas. I think that's a part of being liberal is being open to new ideas, like trying out socialism. Even though socialism is not really a new idea. They call it democratic socialism because that's the part that makes it sound new, right? Uh, but it's actually it's, it's the same thing it's always been. It's wealth redistribution. Uh, but anyways, there's always going to be people on the left that are open to new ideas and trying new things. But I think the majority of the country is actually happy paying lower taxes. And America continues to be one of the countries where you can become wealthy and retire like a millionaire and live in a mansion and own multiple sports cars and all the fun things, right? So America continues to be that way specifically because our taxes are low and our jobs pay a lot. And if that were to change, we would just be another state in Europe, another, another European country. Uh, unfortunately. So I think part of America's identity is capitalism and low taxes. And the Democrats would like to get rid of that. Uh, but it's like Donald Trump is doing his best to get himself in trouble. And well, and of course, I think that he's ha been unfairly treated by the news media. I think that is a, an accurate statement to say that he's been treated unfairly. But I don't know. I, I feel like he's also kind of uh, reckless. I don't know what the word would be with some of the things he does. What would be a better solution to automation than UBI? That's a great question. Um, let me say this first of all. America has to be the first country to create real artificial intelligence. We have to be. If another country innovates on that before us, it will be like when we discovered the atomic bomb first, it will be like that basically. And it will not be pretty and our economy will take a massive hit. And the country that did discover artificial intelligence will everyone who's got investment money is going to be putting their money in that country it will it will be really shitty if america doesn't figure it out first so the idea of limiting the innovation in our tech com companies so that i don't know people who uh, are at the bottom of the hierarchy can have an extra thousand dollars a month and enjoy wonderful inflation the idea that that's a, such a great idea it's a terrifyingly bad idea to me absolutely the last thing i want is to restrict growth when it comes to automation if we don't make the automated stuff first, China will. If we don't make the automated stuff first, Japan will. Uh, and there are all the European countries would like to do it as well. America, by the way, continues to be ahead of a lot of places because of all of our massive technology companies, Google, Facebook, YouTube, all the most important, not all of them, most of the most important technology com companies are still American. And so Andrew Yang, he wants basically to punish them for being so successful. Ooh, we got to take money away from you. I get the idea of paying fair taxes, right? The whole Amazon issue. I get that. But this idea that you innovated and made money through innovation, therefore we need to take some of that money away and redistribute it. That's a terrifyingly bad idea. You should find out who your geniuses are. They should have all the money. And then you tell them, keep going. Whatever it is you're doing that's working, double down. Innovate more. Make the next product. Please keep making good products and hire the best people and pay them well. See, it's, it's, a, it's a class warfare issue. It's a who should be rich, who should be poor. People are so poor they can't afford their health care and they can't afford education and they can't afford housing, right? Those are the three core things that people want right now. Education sucks right now, I'd say, first of all. I think people get educated in all kinds of useless subjects that artificially inflates the cost of uh, college. The fact that you can pull out $40,000 from the government with no questions asked, I would argue this also increases the cost of college. You know why? Because it makes the demand for the college shoot straight up and the colleges know you have access to all that money. So they're like, yeah, we're gonna charge them 40,000 because that's what they can pull out of the government is 40,000. And then finally, you know, you're allowed to go for a really not well-paying subject or degree. All right, so my wife and I, we went for technology degrees, computer, software, engineering. And our degrees pay so well that it, it, there's just no way to lose on the $40,000 investment in that degree. But the problem is we allow young people to go after really stupid degrees. Uh, I don't know, like dan dance seat theater, I'm sure exists. Something like that exists. And we let students, without any questions asked, go after a degree like that and then go into $40,000 in debt. And then what they end up doing is they get a job at your local Target or Walmart. They don't make any money and they're just forever in debt in the rest of their life. They call it a crisis. It's not a crisis, you're poor because you made bad decisions. So it's not a crisis, you're poor and you don't like it. 
Uh, you expected to be rich after you took dance, dance theater or philosophy or whatever it is you took at school. So it's not an actual crisis. You just don't like how indebted you are for your bad decisions. But also you did get ripped off. The school should have never ad advised you to take the, the school should have told you, look, if you're pulling $40,000 out for this degree, be prepared to be poor your whole life because there's a very low chance you make any money out of it. And I think some of them know that, but uh, you know, the other question is, should we be testing the intelligence of the people who are pulling out the, like when you go to a bank and you want to pull, pull out a business loan, do you think the bank just says, okay, and gives you the money? They absolutely do not. They ask you if you have a business plan. They ask for your history that, you know, they're very cautious about it because they know if you fail, the bank loses all its money. Well, the U.S. government doesn't do that at all. The U.S. government just says, yep, no questions asked because we don't want to be called racist or sexist or whatever, right? Uh, by the way, the majority of school debt is held by women, not men. It's like two-thirds of all the debt is held by women. So when they say it's a crisis, it's literally a bunch of girls saying, you need to pay for our history degree. Uh, so anyways, they don't do any kind of... Oh, I should have eaten a meal. <laughs> they they don't do any kind of testing. And this... Okay, so that's one of the three pillars of the thing that's costing everybody so much money in the country right now. Spend all your money on an education, a bad education. Our education systems are not even as competitive uh, as they used to be. Because what colleges do today is they give you a good grade so that you stay in college and keep pulling out the student loan. I was reading about this. So they can give you like a D and then you go, damn, maybe I'm stupid. And then you say, I'm not going to pull out a student loan. I'm going to flunk. So I better stop going to college now. They don't do that. They give you, all right, we're going to curve the grade. We're going to give you a C plus. We're going to give you a B minus. And then you stay in the school. And then you keep pulling out the student loan and paying the college professors. So our education system has terrible incentives. It's inflated because of the student loan. And students are not correctly choosing good classes. Because of course they aren't. They're 18 and they're stupid. But somehow we let them vote which they shouldn't be voting if they're that stupid. Anyways, so that's one of the major problems. The other major problem, I would say, is housing and health care, uh, and those are complicated issues as well. I think that we're, you know, our, our population keeps growing and growing and growing, and honestly, if you would like to have cheaper houses, you got to do two things. you got to lower the population, or you got to increase the number of houses. you got to do one or the other or both at the same time. All right, so America actually, despite all the claims that we're racist, you know, despite all the claims that, oh, we hate immigrants, America is one of the most generous countries in the world for Im immigration. Uh, we take immigrants from all over the world, very often without testing them to see how smart they are. We don't test to see what kind of degrees they have. We have something, we have like a lottery where you just get in if we think that we don't have enough of your race, basically, which is, by the way, a very racist policy. Uh, it's like reverse racism. racism. It's like, uh, anyways, so the point is, America is very generous and takes in crazy number of, of immigrants every year, and it keeps our population growing. Now, that's normally is supposed to be good for your economy to have a growing population, and I think it is as well. With an asterisk, is having a growing population is good as long as the people that you're taking in are very kind of like prosperous and productive. So I don't know if that's always been the case, though, because our system, our immigration system, Again, it doesn't really test people for like how educated they are, uh, if they already, you know what I'm saying. So a lot of, if you look at Europe, a lot of European countries do this. They actually test very carefully to see, uh, can you support yourself while you're here? That's a very important issue for Europeans. They want to know if you can support yourself. America is only now recently doing this because Donald Trump did like an executive order. And he only did the executive order because the Democrats would never agree to this. But basically he says you can't move here if you can't support yourself. This is a common sense rule. Nobody should be disagreeing with this. Absolutely ridiculous if you don't agree with that rule in 2020. All right. It's 2020, guys. Uh, the future is people from other countries have figured out you can move to a country with a lot of social programs and get a lot of stuff. And so, you know, your job if you're living in a poor country is to move to a wealthy country with a lot of social programs. And, uh, you know, that's fine if your country can afford it. America cannot afford that. America has... How much is it now? Is it like $24 trillion of debt? And it's larger than our GDP. So we have more debt than what our country earns in a year. Okay, so the idea that America is just this infinitely wealthy country that can pay for everything is totally mistaken. That's a complete fantasy. You cannot pay for everything. So anyways, I'm, I'm completely for immigration. I, I think that uh, immigration is actually extremely important for every country. But I think that countries should be focusing on trying to brain drain the other countries. So if you're, you know, England, what you should be doing is trying to attract your most intelligent people around the world to England. Same with America, same with Germany. 
uh, and that's the way you compete as a country. But you should definitely not just be pulling people in to strictly have a lot of people, because it turns out one genius is extremely productive, and then uh, lots and lots of other people are just sort of middle class. I'm middle class. I don't think I'm a genius. So you should be doing everything you can to attract geniuses into your country and not worry so much about simply having a large number of people. I don't think that's actually the most important part. But then there's the other side of that equation, building homes. Why don't we just build more homes? I've done research on this as well. The reason we don't build more homes is because uh, people who already own homes don't like the idea of homes being built. You know why? Because when the supply goes up, the value of the already existing homes goes down. Do you understand? So if your grandma and grandpa own a home and they're told it's worth a million dollars, but then a hundred homes are built right next to them, the value of their home doesn't go up anymore. It actually might even recede. So the value of grandma and grandpa's home actually goes down because now there's more supply. Uh, and they don't like that. So what they do is they vote against it. So grandma and grandpa and maybe even mom and dad are voting against they're voting against the building of new homes, basically. Uh, and investors are as well. So rich guys, they come in, they go into California, they say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this $2 million home. I'm investing in it. I believe the value of the home is gonna go up over time because the demand for the homes in California are skyrocketing. But then a, a politician comes around and he says, I'm gonna give out building licenses to build tons of homes right in that area. What do you think the investors do? They vote against that because if that actually happened, then they made a bad investment. They wouldn't get their money back out. So you have a combination of you need to control how fast your population is growing and the quality of the people who are growing in your population, but also you need to build new homes and tell the people who already own homes to go, you know, fuck themselves, basically. <laughs> and and that's not easy to do uh, because they're a large part of the electorate. <laughs> people, people who already own homes, there's a lot of them. I own a home. I own a condo. So it would be in my best interest for not new condos to go up around me. Anyways, so that's uh, that's two pillars of the problem, right? You have uh, college education is freaking ridiculous. You've got homes, which are there's uh, much, 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 much more expensive than they used to be. Uh, and healthcare, which is also a complicated issue. Uh, I haven't come to a conclusion on healthcare. Healthcare is really complex. Um, it is. There's a lot going on with healthcare and why it's so expensive. One of the reasons it's so expensive in America is be simply because we have more money in America. So people can't afford it. Uh, even though you don't want to, you don't want to go broke for your health care. The health care system actually knows that you could, in fact, go broke uh, because you actually do have that money. Uh, so you look out into the world and you're like, well, it's cheaper over there. And it's like, yeah, of course it's cheaper over there. People don't have as much money in that country. So they have to sell it at a lower rate. Uh, the other thing that happens is in America, we have these sort of like copyrights, uh, what are they called, patents. So what will happen is a medical discovery will be made and one company will hold a monopoly on that drug or that procedure or whatever it is, right, that machine. And it's, it could be distributed really cheaply for everyone. But that company says, uh, no, we put billions of dollars of research into this and now we're going to make billions of dollars on it. So... I mean, that's just how it is. They're there for profit, just like you and I are out for... Uh, I'm out for profit when I work on YouTube. You're out for profit when you work for whatever it is you do. Uh, if you're in college right now and you want a $70,000 a year job, you're out for profit. So everyone's out for profit. The question is, how do you reduce the cost of healthcare and still allow companies to make a living? Because I don't agree with the idea that healthcare would be better if you simply removed the profits. I don't agree with that. I think your smartest and your most talented people know that they're talented and they're not all humanitarian. Uh, plenty of them are selfish. They're going, yeah, well, I'm really intelligent and I want to make a good living. So you're going to have to uh, pay me a good, you know, because they could just go into finance, honestly, rather than being a doctor, rather than being a researcher, uh, or rather than being a financier of uh, medicine, right? So there's people who invest in medicine because they know that medicine uh, makes money. And then this investment is used to do research. So. Anyways, if you remove all the profit, like Bernie Sanders says, I don't think that you would actually end up with better healthcare because you would lose all of the geniuses who actually do all of the innovating and all of the, uh, you know, like uh, Elon Musk, basically. You lose e Elon Musk when you tell him he can't make any money because he says, fine, I'm going to another industry. I'm going to go into finances. I'm going to go into, uh, you know, whatever it is, chemistry. I guess there's plenty of chemistry in medicine anyways. But you get my point, right? So you don't actually want to scare your millionaires. You just want to find a way to make healthcare cheaper. So I'm going to make a proposition. Let's say you can have socialized healthcare 
However, we have to actually regulate how unhealthy the food is we sell at the supermarkets. So one of the things I said early in the stream is just recently we discovered that sodium nitrate, which is used virtually in all deli meat, all sausages, all the yummy delicious meats, sodium nitrate apparently is as dangerous as smoking a cigarette. So if you're having bacon, you're smoking a cigarette. Uh, that's their claim anyways. And I, again, I trust the experts actually. I'm that kind of person. So. Uh, this is what the research found and if that's the case we need to out okay we're gonna have socialized medicine but we're also going to ban bacon it's got to be it's got to go hand in hand because one of the things I don't want to do is work hard my whole life to be a healthy individual and basically pay for all the unhealthy individuals that's completely unfair it's a terrible system it creates the wrong incentives uh, and I do want to help people who are struggling with their health and they are simply too poor to pay for it I like that idea it has to be within reason uh, and I think that they also have to be responsible for doing their best to stay healthy, which, trust me, they do not try. <laughs> America, isn't it like the sixth most, most fat country in the world? It's actually shocking to think there's countries fatter than us, too, because I go out and I'm just surrounded by fat people. I went to Six Flags last year. Everyone was fat. It shocked me because when I was a child, uh, see, I was a child in the 90s, right? When I was a child, everyone was thin. And we didn't have the internet. We didn't have um, we didn't have iPhones till like 2006, right? So back then, I would go to Six Flags, and people there, you know, there'd be some fat people, but there were just tons of thin people. I went to Six Flags. Uh, it was last year. I went to Six Flags when it warmed up in the spring. Literally, everyone was fat. Nobody was thin, and I was just shocked by this. We're fatter and we're fatter and we're fatter, and then we're demanding free health care. It's the most toxic terrible idea ever. People should be told they can have free health care if they're actually making healthy decisions. Or we have to say something along the lines of, okay, we're going to have free health care, but you can't have bacon anymore. We're regulating we're regulating the bacon right out of the... You can't have it at a restaurant. You can't have it at a store. It makes no sense. You want the free stuff, but you don't want to have to take responsibility for your health. So we're going to take responsibility for you. Something like that would make sense to me. It's sort of a compromise. And by the way, I do think that socialized health care, strictly for young people who are of working age, I think that that makes perfect sense because they will continue to work and pay taxes. What I don't want is to pay tax. I don't want to pay socialized health care on somebody who's 75 years old. They're totally retired. They're not doing anything productive for society. I know this is totally ages too, by the way. Uh, they're not doing anything productive for society at this point. They're just retired. You know, they go fishing or whatever. They go on a cruise. And then you pay for their, whatever it is that they need. You need their, they need all kinds of stuff. That's grandma and grandpa. Sorry, but grandma and grandpa need to have their children pay for their medical treatment. I do believe that. And grandma and grandpa need to be told, look, you're really old and you need to have saved your money up. You've had, I don't know, about 45 years to save it. So you need to have had some money saved up. And if you didn't, that's your fault. You had 45 fucking years to st save money for your, your health care. And you didn't, and now you can't come over here and demand all the young people who have a worse economy, they have a worse education, and they have worse uh, ability to buy homes have to pay now for your health care. You're absolutely selfish. Extremely selfish. We're all going to die. Young people will die someday. You're going to die someday. Just, I don't know, have some, have some, uh, what would be the word? Have a sense of responsibility for young people. <laughs> Understand that, uh, you know, you can't live forever. It doesn't matter how much money you pump into the healthcare system. There's no amount of socialism that will save you from inevitably dying. So, I don't know. It's, it's just one of those really tough subjects when you get to that point. So healthcare, ho housing, and education, they're all so fricked. And uh, there's solutions for them. I really think there are. But uh, people are split, completely split on the solutions. The Democrats basically just want to throw money at everything, and I think that's a terrible solution uh, because the solution doesn't actually get to the root of the problem, uh, and we just talked about all the roots of the problems. Public health care works really well in a lot of countries. It's not impossible to not be corrupt as frick. So there's a lot of asterisks to that. What country are you talking about? One where people are significantly poorer than America? Because you can become really wealthy in America. You can stay healthy, not pay for doctor bills because you stayed healthy, and then you can invest your money and get a high paying job and become a millionaire. Probably not as easy to do that in your country. And uh, guess what? I kind of want to be a millionaire someday. 
So I want to be in America where I don't have to pay for everyone else's health care. I'll pay for my own. I'll pay for my grandma. I'm paying right now, by the way, for my my in-laws. Uh, my my mother-in-law has, uh, she just recovered from stage four cancer. It cost us like $11,000. We're out $11,000. You guys didn't have to pay that. And maybe, you know, your, your parents and your grandparents stayed healthier. Who knows? Uh, and I think that's actually the correct way to do it, you know? I do want people to get... There's also charities, by the way. Oh, wait, did I just join somebody else's... I just joined Zanska. Hold on to this. <laughs> Zanska, this isn't an option. What am I doing with myself? I'm just hitting buttons too fast. Oh, I did it again. Here we go. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I really do... I'm, I'm interested in the idea of socialized health care. But there's some complicated parts to it. Can we ensure that the people who are living in your country actually do make healthier choices? Can we also can we also ensure that the level same level of medical innovation is being accomplished? Those are some really important issues when it comes to healthcare. Those are really important for me. Do we get the same level of innovation? Right? Uh, can you still become wealthy in your country? And will the people actually make healthy choices? And I don't think that's how it is in America right now. I think America is almost famous for making really unhealthy choices in life. We're pretty famous for consumption in America. And the idea that you get to consume all your vices, your cookies, your alcohol, your jewel or whatever, your cigarettes, your weed. I don't know. If, I don't think weed's healthy, to be honest. You're just burning another thing and inhaling the smoke. I doubt that it's that healthy. I've heard people make like really salacious claims about how healthy it is. I, I have trouble believing that. Something tells me what's healthy is just breathing fresh air. That's probably healthy. Uh, I don't actually think breathing smoke is ever that healthy. So anyways, you've got all these vices that we love to consume in America and the idea that we can be famous for that and then say, all right, I spent my whole life treating my body like shit. Go ahead and pay for my health care. Come on, man. It just sounds like shit just sounds like and and it's again it's not young people young you know clever smart people going oh this is such a great system it's everyone who's already 70 years old realizing oh my god i have cancer and i have uh, to pay for all this cancer treatment now and i don't want to go bankrupt paying for it uh, and they're going all right well we're going to vote for whichever politician is going to pay for it that's it really unfair to you guys so unfair to young people because everything's already so much more expensive today than it used to be and to think that now you have to pay for the older generation's health care too it's the biggest ripoff ever uh, and i think that it's crazy that that stuff has been marketed to young people like it's for you it's not for you it's for 70 year olds it's for 80 year olds who all have cancer right now it is strictly not for young people Young people rarely go to the hospital for cancer. It happens, but it's very rare. Almost everyone with heart and di heart cancer, you know, not heart cancer, cancer, diabetes, and uh, all these other problems, they're all much older in life already. Uh, and they've had, they've had like 30 to 40 to 50 years to save up for this. They've had so much time. Everyone since the beginning of time has told you you need to save your money. Nobody, this is, it's like the most basic common sense. You need to save money for when you're older. And then they didn't do it. Now they're saying, all right, now the young people, it should be strictly the other way around. You know, this is the big tragedy. Tragedy. The elderly have had such a prosperous economy and so much intelligence and so much knowledge has been available. The elderly should have all be leaving us a huge inheritance. Instead, we're, we're debating how much money young people are going to give away to the elderly. That's what we're at right now. That's how bad they were with their money. It's a complete catastrophe. Instead of talking about how much wealth the elderly are leaving behind for everyone, we're talking about, gosh, how much health care am I going to pay for grandma and grandpa? It's a huge tragedy financially. It's embarrassing. How are elderly not more elderly people not more embarrassed with the state of the country that uh, they've left behind? The, the debt in the country People treat it like it's some abstract thing. Oh yeah, that's just the thing. No, we pay debt. We pay interest on that every year. Our government, which taxes us, pays interest on all the borrowed money every year. And it's just, and then they vote to borrow more money. They pretty strictly vote to borrow more money. You know what I would actually like to see in politics? I would like to see a change to the constitution that says you cannot borrow more money until the the budget's balanced or something, right? So something like, uh, except for war, you cannot borrow money. 
until the budget is balanced. That would be sane, in my opinion. That's not like, oh man, that's crazy talk. That would be very sane of them to do that. Oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> the poison's got me. Are you playing on PC? I am. What on earth are you talking about? What on earth are you on about the English for? Where do you think our taxes go, Jesus? It's called a hypothetical. Give me an example. Nobody chooses to get cancer. Uh, I completely agree. I'm probably going to get cancer one day. If I'm lucky, I will get cancer because the way you get cancer is you outlive heart disease and you outlive diabetes, right? So then eventually you get cancer. So hopefully one day I get cancer from just being old and I will have to pay for my own cancer treatment and you guys will too. Uh, but you've got to save up money to take care of yourself. Uh, the idea that society is responsible for your health, that's a modern idea. It's not an idea we had in the past and I want to die with indignity. I don't want to die going around telling everyone to pay for my shit, necessarily. Like, if you want to do it charitably, that's one thing. But when I say, you've got to pay for my shit, I mean telling the government to tax you. Like, you've got your whole life ahead of you. I've already lived mine. I've already been young and had all the sex and all the consumables. And I've already had all the enjoyable things in life. It's your turn. You're young and it's your turn to enjoy life. But instead, you're paying, like, half of your paycheck out so that I can have my cancer treatment. How... Freaking selfish can you be, man? So I'm, you know, hopefully I die with dignity, basically. Everyone should want that. And I want to, you know, I want to die leaving an inheritance behind. Because then you won't have to pay for my children, either. My children will be taken care of. See? People think uh, so badly of inheritances. Like, oh, I hate that they have an inheritance. What are you talking about? Those are people you never have to pay for. They've taken care of their own. That's, that's wonderful, actually. Here's a, you know, here's children that will never ask for your socialism money because their parents made enough money and now the children are just taken care of. That's brilliant. It's how it, how it should be for everyone, honestly. If grandma and grandpa worked really hard over their life and they saved and they were smart most of the time, and you get unlucky, I can understand that, but uh, a lot of it, a lot of it is calculated. You know what I mean? Saving your money is a pretty calculated thing. Living within your means, spending less than you earn. These are old ideas. None of this is, like, new. I don't understand why... Well, I, you know, I could go on and on about the subject. All the meatballs are mine. Nom, 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 nom. Humankind has always helped each other. That's how we got to where we are today. Actually, living end, I will take the opposite uh, of that argument. Humankind, the most consistent thing we've done is go to war with each other. And almost every country that exists today was taken through war. And war is the murder of people that you're taking things from. Even going so far back as to when England was being settled by the Vikings. The Vikings went in, they raided you, they killed you off because they were taking all your things. And they did this so much and so consistently that the people got used to it enough that the Vikings would show up. And then the people would just bring all their shit down to the dock and be like, here, have all our stuff and you don't have to kill us. That's how humans actually are. Humans are incredibly selfish. Yeah. The idea that humans have helped each other throughout time. No, humans have pretty consistently killed each other throughout time and taken things from each other. We're very selfish. Living In says, if I got cancer today, I would have no choice but to die at 23 because I can't afford the treatment. Uh, see, I don't know if that's, first of all, I don't know if that's 100% true. Because of your young age, there's a very fair chance that the, uh, the hospital would be willing to make you a loan and have you pay that back over time. But the second thing is, I, I do advocate for socialized health care for young people. I think anyone in the working age, maybe up to the age of 50 or 45, should probably have socialized health care as long as, you know, they can be a productive citizen. It makes perfect sense because they'll be able to pay back the cost of the health care over time with taxation. Uh, but after a certain age, you just don't work anymore. You're like 75 years old. You're not you know, you're not doing a lot of work unless you're crazy healthy. Uh, in which that case, you probably don't have any health care bills. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Humankind is all about survival. That's right. Uh, Spun Yarn says, I'm in, the I'm in that boat, but would we all agree that both those things need some form of improvement? Alice says, there are a great video on YouTube of what would happen if humans just disappeared and it's beautiful. Uh, the world flourishes, but what does that even matter? I mean, there's no one to care. You think the animals care about beauty? I, the animals care about having sex and killing each other. So that's about it. Humans are the ones that appreciate beauty. So saying you want to get rid of all humankind, people who really believe that, I, I tell them to get rid of themselves first. I honestly believe that. Feel free to get rid of yourself. Just move to Sweden. I'll take care of your sexy ass. Oh, hell yeah. I'm going to Sweden, guys. <laughs> 
Man, frick politics, I just watch you murder ka kaijus. Technically, we are always selfish no matter what we do. Yeah, oh, that's actually a philosophical idea, right? There is no such thing as love. There's no such thing as love. Isn't that, uh, that's Nietzsche or something, right? Didn't he say something like that? Love is an illusion. AWX says, I've updated for main game. Its name is Monster and World Iceborne. Do I need to update it to play Iceborne? Uh, yeah, so you have to buy both the base game and the expansion together to play Iceborne. Russell says, we need to reduce what we spend on social programs and force people to take care of their own problems and not have the government pay for them. Well, and this is the thing. I think that we can have social programs, but we have to also have a balanced budget. Okay, that, that should not surprise anyone. A balanced budget is common sense. People who disagree with the balanced budget are probably people who don't care about future generations. Because here we are, we're crazy in debt. Nobody talks about it. The politicians don't talk about it. Especially the politicians on the left don't talk about it. And uh, we're crazy in debt. We pay interest on that debt. Uh, we're going to have children. You and I are going to have children someday, right? All of us. And we're going to leave some insane debt that grandma and grandpa put together. We're going to leave an even worse debt for our grandchildren, our grandchildren. No, we got to fix it right now. Because grandma and grandpa didn't do us any favors. And the best we can do is fix it for our grandchildren. That's the best thing we can do right now is reverse the direction we're going with it all. Are you running for president? Yep, I'm running. Game Economist 2050. Uh, <laughs> Maybe when I'm 60, right? Or something like that. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be a good politician. Nice, I'll make my guest rooms ready for you. You have guest rooms? Wow, millionaire. <laughs> That is not the point at all. The government is not supposed to solve it. Solve your individual issues like poor spending and saving, having kids. Well, no, actually, I think that the government creating a social welfare net uh, has plenty of benefits. You know, it, I don't believe in survival of the fittest being an ultimatum that you have to live by. You Charity has always been part of... Uh, but, but the thing is, if you're going to have charity, especially government-regulated charity, it just... It has to make sense financially, in my opinion, because there's there's a point where just you're just m making things worse for the future, basically. Okay, so if you think you're helping people today by going completely bankrupt today, all you're doing is you're screwing the people of tomorrow. That's exactly what's happening. The people of tomorrow are super screwed. Uh, and the people of today, of course, don't care about that because humans are designed to survive. Our brains work that way. And they're like, I don't care what happens to you. All I know is I'm gonna vote for whoever pays for my cancer treatment today, right? So they don't, they don't really think that way. A lot of people don't. You ever have people in your family? This is such a funny uh, topic. There were two types of people in my family. People who went to the bath bathroom and flushed the toilet, right? And left the bathroom clean. And people who went to the bathroom and left it nasty and they didn't flush. So there's two types of people in the world. I'm one of the people who leaves the bathroom beautiful and clean for the next person who uses it. Uh, and the people who leave it nasty and dirty uh, it's like they need to be sh maybe shaken a little bit and told, like, stop it. <laughs> and, and, and everyone needs to not be so naive and realize there's lots of people out in the world that way. And they are always, always interested in having your things. So it's like, you think you're being such a moral and great person. Oh, I'm, I'm just a loving, caring person. No, you're naive and you're being taken advantage of is what's happening. And, and you're too nice to realize it. You, somebody needs to shake you by the shoulders before you do something stupid before you get taken advantage of any more than you need to be. Uh, there's naive people out there who are too generous. It actually hurts them to be that generous. A quick Google search is 1.6 trillion on social programs. And, oh, you guys are talking about the cost. Yeah, so for those of you, some of you who have already watched my live streams already know this, uh, the vast majority of money in America gets spent on a few things. Social security, which is money we give to the elderly for being elderly, and then healthcare. Those are the two things the government spends all its money on. And, you know, it spends a little bit of its money on the military. Everyone's like, oh, we do so much military spending. Did you know it's not even close to how much money we spend on Social Security and healthcare? We spend almost all our money on welfare programs right now. And we're trillions of dollars in debt. And Bernie Sanders is like, yeah, so my healthcare program will put us $33 trillion into additional debt. We're not talking about the already existing debt. We're talking about additional debt. 33 more trillion dollars in the debt. And he says, well, because everyone's going to be healthy, all the money's going to be made back. I don't actually believe that. I think most of the money will be spent on people who are the ages of 60, 70, and 80, and then these guys will probably not earn that money back in their lifetime. 
Do you believe striking your children to teach them manners? Um, uh, that was a whole topic we talked about. I think that there's a sort of a line you can pass very easily between trying to teach your children to be good humans and taking your anger out on your children. And I think when you take your anger out on your children, you are basically abusing them. All right, so people, you know, they get mad at their kids and it's, it's not an issue of, ah, I need to teach them to be a better person. It's about getting even with your kid and having control. Uh, and this is a very different type of punishment for the child. And, and people who have been through a lot of child abuse probably will recognize this very easily. It's a lot of violence. You know what I mean? I mean, how effective... Let me ask you a question. Let's say the government had two ways to punish you. It could either give you a ticket or leave you in jail. Or the police officer can pull out a metal rod and just beat you. Which one's going to teach you to be a better citizen? Would you rather be beaten by the cop? Or would you rather, you know, pay your pay your fine and try not to break the law next time? I think the vast majority of the times, probably all all times actually, I think that a cop beating you for being, you know, breaking the law would actually leave you feeling a lot of resentment toward the government. And uh, really you would be afraid of being beaten, but it would not teach you to be a better person. You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? It doesn't teach you to be a better person. And, uh, and in a way, it kind of teaches you that, well, the uh, people in charge use violence to accomplish their goals. Why don't you use violence, right? So it actually makes everyone probably a little more violent. God, this guy digs way too much. We need uh, we need the sound pods, right? The uh, screecher pods. There's a flinch. You guys, if you don't support Bernie, you're an alt-right. Question, question, question. Spun Yarn says, Socialism didn't kill those people. Corrupt governments using socialism for their benefits killed, killed those people. Uh, I know what Spun Yarn's talking about. So, basically, one of the people... One of the things we always talk about is uh, socialism fails, right? That's why everyone talks about it. And, and uh, in a lot of cases, socialism did fail, right? And, and then they always point inevitably to, like, uh, Sweden or Denmark or something. And they say, see, socialism can work. Even though they don't have anywhere close to the same socioeconomic problems that we have here in America. They're a very small country, maybe of people who are of higher intelligence. We were just talking about how IQ is mostly static. It is possible to have a country of high IQ people who are fairly successful, and then you have a very small homogenous group of people. There's not that much diversity. Uh, so it is possible to have that, and I think, it, you know, funny enough, I, I actually believe socialism could work in a country full of rich people. See what I'm saying? So if, if you have a group of millionaires, let's say there's 10 millionaires in a group, and they say, we're going to be socialists, socialism will work fine for those 10 millionaires, because they're millionaires. Socialism actually is usually called on when you have a lot of poor people, and uh, then the poor people basically are just saying, you need to redistribute your wealth. That's usually what's going on. Uh, and if you were to take everyone who wants socialism out of America, just take all of them and put them on their own tiny little island, and they were to try to attempt socialism, it would turn out that socialism fails immediately for that group because they don't have any money. So it's, it's, socialism is a fancy word for wealth redistribution. Uh, and there's all kinds of like labels we give socialism. Uh, and uh, it's not necessarily wrong to redistribute wealth. It's just I really do feel like there's a limit to how much you can get away with the uh, giving. You see what I'm saying? Because if, if socialism is putting you $33 trillion into debt, it's just a bad investment. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to do that. Uh, and it's the government essentially deciding how you'll spend your money charitably. That's, that's what it is. The government saying, yeah, we're going to be... Re and ironically, well, not ironically, and uh, the, what would be the correct word? Uh, unsurprisingly, it's also the politicians who, uh, you know, they're running on this idea of we will give you stuff. This is the other thing that's very concerning. But anyways, his point is that is corruption that makes socialism fail rather than socialism itself. And I think he's actually sort of correct about this, but it's like, who would be better off? So when it comes to socialism, we're talking about there's billions of dollars made and it can sit in one person's hand or it can sit in another person's hands. It can sit in the hands of the innovators who earned the money or it can sit in the hands of the politicians who taxed the innovators. Who's going to be better at using the money and who's going to be corrupt with that money? To be honest, it's going to be the government. This is why the vast majority of times you find corruption in socialist countries is because the socialists who are in power and they just take all the money, they didn't earn it and they they took the money through force. I mean, it just is a perfect storm for corruption. 
That's the problem. It's, it's, very, it's far too easy to become corrupt in a socialist system. It's far too easy. That is the main problem with uh, socialism. Also, by the way, another issue you guys never really probably think about is when you're redistributing wealth, you actually have to hire a bunch of people to redistribute that wealth. And this is very inefficient. So, you know, let's say we were going to be charitable. I'm going to take care of my own grandma and grandpa. They get cancer and I pay for their cancer. Here's what happens. I take money out of my wallet and I give them my money. But now let's do a different system where we're going to redistribute the wealth. How many accountants and how many government financiers are going to be hired to send your grandma and grandpa a check for their health care and ensure that they're not cheating the law or that they're not taking advantage of the system, ensure that they have a legitimate need for the money. So you hire all these government officials to do all those jobs. But if it's just you paying for your own grandma and grandpa, you just give them the cash. So you hire all these government officials to redistribute the wealth. What do you think they're paid? Like 40000 60000 a year? Probably something fairly decent. Uh, you know, it could be a little lower. It could be like twenty five to forty. But they get paid. So you're like, oh man, we got to have this redistribute system. You're creating all these useless jobs. Totally unnecessary jobs. And there's not enough money to go around already, which is how we got into the problem. We don't have enough money for grandma and grandpa. Imagine creating all these unnecessary jobs and paying these people $40,000 a year to take your money and then give your money to your grandparents. It's so freaking stupid, dude. You, when, you, when you're even halfway decent at math or, or finances and you think about that for a second, you're like, why would I hire somebody to take my money and then give it to my grandparents? I can just do that right now for free. See what I'm saying? So this is another part of redistribution that people really don't take into accounting. All kinds of money is lost when the government takes your money and decides who to give it to because they have a, they have to hire a bunch of people to decide who to give it to, uh, to, to redistribute the money to, right? So it's uh, just very inefficient in all kinds of ways. That's right, Berrieth. Run over there and examine the pod. I never understand why you talk about such divisive topics here. The chat goes insane, lol. Oh, it's just so fun to talk about it. Nancy Pelosi is submitting my optional quest to the Senate. It's time to put her in a peach. You would be creating so many useless jobs to check and validate. Exactly. Check and validate the uh, need for the finances. Not the lifestyle choices, but need, check and, uh, and validate the need for the finances. So somebody, some clerk gets hired to do that, and it they actually cost a lot. They're going to be like, oh, well, I deserve a good wage, a living wage. They're going to be like, I deserve... Uh, $40,000 is what they're going to ask for, and it could actually be more. And so you're, the whole point of the redistribution is to help your grandma and grandpa with their cancer. That's, that's the main need for all this health care, right? The point is to help them, but you're paying this third person to take your money and then to redistribute your money. It's such a stupid way to help grandma and grandpa out, right? It's a really dumb way to do it. It just takes a bunch of money and throws it into a black hole. Totally uh, unnecessary job exists. Oh god. The spread shot is actually able to shoot the hammer out of its hammer charge. Isn't that annoying? I tried to roll it. Bro, Barry just wanted to check the pod WTF. <laughs> I agree. In theory, again, if we didn't act upon our human nature, then it would work. Are we talking about socialism? I Again, I think that socialism can work. I think communism can work. We know communism can work. You know why? Because China's the second most powerful economy in the world right now, and they're communists. They're communists. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a question of whether it can work. It's a question of what's best for your country, what's best for you, and... Uh, it's, it's a more careful analysis of what's actually going on in your country. If everyone in America were millionaires, nobody needed help with health care, nobody needed help with college, nobody needed help with housing, everyone had a job that they loved, I'd vote for health care, I'd vote for socialism today. It wouldn't matter because nobody needs the money. The reality is a ton of people need money and the question is, well, okay, why do you need my money? Okay, uh, well, I can't afford my health care. All right, so should I give you my money or should I change the health care system? Uh, should I give you my money, or should I require you to stop eating bacon your whole life? Uh, require you to stop eating McDonald's your whole life, right? Which which one is it? Uh, what about college? Oh, well, we're in a college crisis. Well, should I give you, should I pay for your Shakespeare education? Or should I tell you you're kind of stupid for going to school for Shakespeare and enjoy being poor? You should have made better choices. Uh, you know, that's not my choice. You, you went to school and received the benefits of the education, 
and now I'm a guy who didn't go to school and I just learned how to lay bricks and you spent years talking about how I'm some stupid uneducated male who just lays bricks and you're awakened and intelligent and college educated brilliant girl but here you are asking for me to pay for your college so you see it's just how what are the actual demands and why are we at this point where people are like alright we need to start giving money away right also all of the hate for the wealthy I, I so get I get really tired of that I really do all that all the hate and anger toward the wealthy I actually really like wealthy people and I hope that in America we have the most wealthy people than any other country innovators investors people who understand how money works and how to invest money and how to create new product and compete really I hope that we have the most millionaires of any country millionaires and billionaires both of them those guys pay a ton of taxes even if they pay a lower rate of taxes you know like percentile they pay a ton of taxes so if if, if I the game economist if I paid 50 percent taxes and a billionaire paid 2% taxes, you would look at it with outrage, like, oh, he only paid 2%, you pay 50. So what? He still paid like million, not millions, he still paid way more taxes than I did, even though his rate was smaller. He paid, he's one human being, I'm one human being, and he literally pulled out of his pocket way more money than I did to give it to the government. And it's probably because of whatever industry he's in and how clever he is at making money and, and uh, investing in money, right? So all the hatred toward the wealthy has got to, is so poisonous and it's honestly I think it's just a tool to get you elected right so all this division all of the all of the feminism and racism and blah 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 it's just a tool for people who want to get elected to be honest they're, they're hate spinners they're like uh, they're like expert haters basically and they get you all riled up and they get you voting and get, voting crazy and you know you're you're joining their team their club their cult if you want to call it that and you get to be outraged with them and hate everyone your whole life uh, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Ah, I hate, I hate rich people. I hate that they're wealthy. You sound so ridiculous. It's like, okay, um, what does that accomplish? You want, you want them to leave? You want them to take their billions of dollars and leave? Because they probably could do that easier than anyone else in the world. A billionaire is more capable of leaving than anyone else. They have all the money they need to leave to a country that appreciates them. See what I'm saying? No one else would find it easier to leave than a millionaire and a billionaire. They can go buy a castle in Scotland if they want to. Easy. So all the, all the hatred toward toward wealthy people, it, it's not logical. It's not, honestly, I don't even feel like it's American, to be honest. It just feels really un-American to hate people who are successful. The rich donate money to their own foundation to pay not taxes a bunch of criminals. Yeah, see, that's what you've been convinced of. You've been convinced that wealthy people are criminals. It's like, but there are actual, actual criminals out there who are hurting people. This guy's just a wealthy guy who's found a way not to have Uncle Sam waste his money, basically. Money he earned, by the way. Uncle Sam doesn't earn money. Uncle, Well, Uncle Sam has the post office, but for the most part, Uncle Sam doesn't earn money. So this guy's found a clever way to avoid Uncle Sam wasting his money in some stupid pointless war or some stupid program or whatever other thing he doesn't agree with. He's found a clever way to avoid it. He hasn't hurt anyone. He hasn't shot your grandma. He hasn't done anything wrong. He's found a way to avoid taxes, and you hate him for it. Well, it's like, maybe that's why he's rich, because he's smart enough to figure out how to avoid taxes. And what do you want him to do? Leave? What if he pays even some taxes? What if he, pay what if he pays, like, 10%? You still want him to leave? It's like, okay, we'll say goodbye to all of his taxes. He will go to another country and pay that over there. Do you see the problem in your logic with hating, hating, wealthy people, accusing them of being criminals even. Oh man, it's so, you're a criminal, you're a crook. God, it's so, I don't know. It's an outrage culture. We have an outrage culture. You feel good hating on people. You feel good going after that hateful drama. And it's like, these are Americans. The wealthy, even if you, you don't see yourself as being part of their group, they're Americans just like you. Or, you know, if you're in England or in Germany, they're part of your group. You should be happy to have them in your group. You should be like, yeah, we got all the millionaires over here. They love it over here. This is my country. It's full of millionaires and successful people. You should be proud of that. People aren't proud of that anymore. It's, uh, politicians have like convinced you guys to, to think that is a terrible thing. You need to submit some optionals to the Senate because I got you. <laughs> I am the... Oh, my gosh. I didn't even... Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't even leave Streamlabs open. I don't know if any donations have been made. Probably, probably not because I've been chanting the whole time. You know, again, if there's like loopholes in the tax system, we can look at closing the loopholes and we can 
we can improve our taxes and we can tell Amazon, look, we want you to pay some taxes. Totally fine with all that, but the anger and the hate toward people who are ultimately your most successful people who you should be proud of. All that, ultimately all that hate, I just, I can't stand it. I get so tired of it. Uh, Spun Yarn says, honestly, education is overvalued. You can learn what can be taught in colleges for free. That's right in a lot of cases. Uh, I would say the most difficult con uh, most difficult uh, subjects, maybe like cutting edge, te cutting edge technology, computer science, engineering, math, uh, things you need a license for, like medicine, uh, and even finances. If you go to school for finances and business, all of those are perfectly legitimate. The problem is a lot of schools like to throw in a lot of unnecessary crap as well like okay you're here for a finance degree enjoy taking philosophy and art history it's like but i don't need those and they're like yeah that's that's great but you're going to pay for them and you're going to take them anyways so that's one of the problems uh, and then the the other problem is there's just all kinds of useless degrees that people go go for because they can pull out forty thousand dollars and have a party in college for the next four years i don't have to work for four years i got free money <laughs> it's like oh no <laughs> I got free money. <laughs> I don't have to worry about this for four years. Four years is going to fly right by, and then you will have to worry about it. <laughs> four years go by. Oh, my God, it's a crisis. Can you pay for my history degree? <laughs> oh. I saw that miss him. Nargapuga. Aren't most CEOs sociopaths or psychopaths? I mean, I feel like we use those terms too loosely. You know what I mean? Uh, like, let's say you had to make a tough choice. Uh, there's a train on a track. This is a classical philosophical question. Train on a track. It's going to kill your kid or it's going to kill your neighbor's kid. You, one of them's going to die. You have to decide who dies. And you have to make that decision. So you make the decision to save your own kid because you're selfish and you want your own kid to live. Are you a psychopath? So it's, it's such a fallacious question or thing to say. Yeah, it, it's a very clickbaity article, perhaps, that you would find on the internet. Yes, maybe they're better at making tough choices, but also it's because they're in those positions where they have to make tough choices. Maybe they're actually really smart would be something that I would suspect. Our CEOs, they're probably really intelligent. Everyone's capable of making a psychopathic decision. They're not serial killers, I can tell you that. Those guys are actual, actual psychopaths. Serial killers? But it's like, telling everyone a CEO is a psychopath, I think it's just... Oops, I think it's for the drama, to be honest. I think it's for the clickbait. I don't know, man. Like I said, if I was to use my full mod power, a lot of dumb people with dumb comments would be timed out. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> this is a uh, this is a free freedom of speech uh, commentary section. <laughs> This game caught him as freedom of speech chat room. <laughs> We're gonna have uh, dear leader Mary. <laughs> Let's see. It's so dumb they force you to take three accounting classes for any business major, despite. Hold on. Despite 90% of the people in the class not going to be accountants. I don't think that's actually uh, useless at all. Well, maybe three is excessive, uh, but probably you could do one or two. But accounting is actually a very, very, very significant part of business. Even if you're not going to be uh, doing the accounting yourself for your business, being able to understand, you know, how your company goes in the debt to turn a profit and how the margins work with this and just being able to understand the accounting cycle so that you know what your very important business partner is doing or what your very important employee is doing. Uh, I don't consider that's actually one of the best part of business is learning accounting I would say accounting allows you to understand if a, a company is viable you know what I you see what I'm saying so you can look at uh, the accounting records for a company and know how well of a company it is and make choices on investment and uh, some people do this professionally I would say the reason the accountants are paid better is because they're doing the most important part of the job of business that's why accountants get paid so much in the first place so if your business degree is requiring a lot of, a lot of accounting, uh, it's probably never a useless skill to know, to be honest, accounting. There's, there's other things that could be way worse. Again, like if you're going to have to take Shakespeare to get your business degree, there's a useless subject. At least accounting is re related to business. It's like at the heart of business accounting is. 
most business is about accounting because when you buy a product for 10 bucks, you know you gotta sell it for, I don't know, like 15 and then pay for all your overhead and pay your taxes. So understanding if you're going to be in the green and make a profit margin that's reasonable and means that you should stay in that particular business rather than moving into a different business is so important. It's, it's very important. If you want to be like an innovator or something, then maybe you are in the wrong, maybe you should go into uh, engineering or something. A little different, bit of a different course. Yeah, so, but that's, I wouldn't call that business as much as I would call that creating a product, right? But, so there are probably exceptions, you know, if you want to do a particular type of business. I'm going to get my communications major. <laughs> side smash instead of the big bang one two three oh he didn't like that he's ready to be thrown into a wall guys oh what oh I should have released it sooner How are they able to knock me out of the hammer charge? It's so annoying. <laughs> what if we remove the activity rolls and make the top three people invader rolls? I mean, they invade the Discord, so why not? How about healthcare, says Tommy Nori. How about it? Usually is how much they're worth asset company value Lamborghini collection. What? I think I got discouraged because my teacher for the first accounting class was god awful and made me not like it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's a very dry subject. I think that accounting and economics are some of the best courses anyone can take for just about every subject in life. Understanding ideas like supply and demand is so critical if you want to go out and make money and we all do we all want to make money because you need money so that you don't have to tell the government to pay for your things and vote for bernie sanders uh and uh, similarly with accounting uh, accounting helps you understand like how do i measure how well my business is doing that's what accounting strictly is it tells you how good is my business how good is my opponent's business so accounting and, and economics are two of the most valuable classes that you could probably take it at school because we all need to make money in order to pay for our things uh, you're well educated if you took those courses in my book your doctor still need to take you still should consider taking courses in accounting and economics you'll be a, a book writer should still, still take courses in economics and accounting <laughs> it, it literally applies to your whole life anyone who makes money should consider economics and accounting next optional you can still watch you can still go do like Shakespeare just you know read it at home for free <laughs> Just read Shakespeare for free and find some guy on YouTube to talk about it with you. Jeff Bezos is worth many, many billions. He makes $150,000 a minute. He gave 60000 to charities for the fires down under. A lot of money? Yes, for him, not remotely. But it's still a lot of money, okay? I get the point. People are people. Oh, man, yeah, I get it though. People are jealous. He, he's got a lot of money. I think one of the arguments when it comes to the wealthy is, are they immoral for not giving more? That's basically the heart of that argument. Are they immoral for not giving uh, uh, an amount of money portionate to the amount that they make? And uh, is something you can certainly argue about if you believe in morals. <laughs> We don't talk about the Happy Meal. Hmm. The Happy Meal. When I was a kid, we never went out to eat. And when we did, which was very rare, we ate at Taco Bell. And my mom bought us all bean burritos. My mom was kind of a health nut when we were kids. Uh, she got us bean burritos because all it had in it was beans. <laughs> 
on a very, very rare occasion, we would get French fries from McDonald's, but I could probably count on my hands how many times we did that. We just strictly didn't eat out. And one of the reasons for that was because with so many children, 11 children, you can't really afford to go out to eat. It's too expensive. It would cost like $200 or something. You know what I mean? Well, it would cost more than 200 11 children, if you spend, uh, you know... Yeah, it just depended on where you were eating, actually. It, it depended. If you were getting fast food, maybe you could get the fast food for about 80 bucks. My parents were always in debt, so they couldn't afford that kind of stuff. I spent my whole life basically living in debt. Um, I'm at a point in my life where I'll probably be debt-free in about a year, maybe two years. Hopefully, uh, my mother-in-law doesn't get the cancer back. I, I would love that, actually. I think my wife would, too. The cancer doesn't return for a very long time. Um, and then we would just pay off our student loans and hopefully, uh, you know, kind of move into the middle class and live reasonable lives. I don't know. Maybe I have a card, Pokemon card addiction right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you believe in more morals, Galaxy Brain Atheist. <laughs> I think that point is... I think that point is what I'm talking about when I'm saying ha having a billion dollars is unethical. That money has been existing somewhere else. Okay, so this is one of the... Uh, so what he's talking about is a very interesting subject. It's, it's about what you believe wealth is. Do you believe that wealth is finite and that uh, basically if Jeff Bezos has a billion dollars, it means he basically took a billion dollars out of the pool? Or do you believe wealth is created? Wealth is where... There's a billion dollars worth of goods in the world, and when you create a new product, there's two billion dollars worth of good in the world. And the answer to that, I think, is somewhere in the middle, because people who are on the side of, oh, well, wealth is created, they just believe that there's some sort of infinite amount of money. But there isn't, because really people only buy so much stuff. This is this is one of the uh, problems with supply-side economics. So it's like, let's say we could take Oreo cookies and make them uh, a penny each because we reduce taxes or whatever, right? Oh, wow, the Oreos are so cheap now. Well, yes, but will people actually buy that many Oreos? It's like, no, there's a limit to how many Oreos people actually will want to buy. So it's like lowering taxes infinitely is not strictly not a going to, well, what, I shouldn't use the word strictly so so uh, loosely, but I'm saying it's, it's not always a good thing. So, if, for example, if lowering taxes was so good, why don't we just lower the taxes right now to zero? <laughs> why don't we lower it to 1% if lowering taxes was so good? And this is something that, uh, you know, is a question that people who are heavy conservatives can talk about. Like, what do you guys really think? You really think 1% taxes is uh, the right way to do this? It's probably not. <laughs> oh, let's go ahead. Oh, no. Uh, but likewise, uh, you know, it, it's, so you can do the reverse of the argument and say, well, if you tax at 99%, that's not going to be good either. So the question is always like, what's the correct balance to keep people spending money and being productive? And so you know, people have differing points of views on all of it. <laughs> Gee's parents got busy. Yeah, they did. Actually, they were always having sex, so it's like, I don't know. I just heard my parents having sex pretty much all the time. Are you going to have 13 kids, Game Economist? Well, if I have 13 kids, I'm going to need 13 wives, and they'll all have the baby in the same year. <laughs> Get it done in nine months. 13 kids, done. <laughs> Too much of a good thing can be bad for you. Billionaires are bad from econ economy standpoint. No, you've been told they're bad from an economic standpoint. What do you think that the billionaires actually do with a billion dollars? Do you think that they take the money and put it under their mattress? So if billionaires actually took their money and put it under their mattress, then yeah, they would be really bad for the economy. They would be really, really bad because they are basically uh, wasting all of the usefulness of that money. What do the billionaires actually do with billions of dollars? They invest it. It doesn't matter how they invest it. They almost always, I mean, I, there, if there's an exception, I don't know it. But what they do is they take that money and they put it into the stock market. A lot of people don't really have an understanding of what's going on in the stock market. So basically, the stock market is a way for a company to build capital that it needs to operate as a business. So Target sells its stocks and then it takes the money from the stocks and it buys new stores, it pays for its product, you know, it does, it innovates uh, research, it, uh, 
you know, it does all of this stuff with that money. And then the business grows. The business grows and it earns cash and it pays the dividends out for the people who purchase the uh, stock, the investment, right? So what a billionaire does, he takes his billions of dollars and he puts it into the stock market so that all these companies have plenty of uh, uh, revenue to grow their business and be able to afford the billions of dollars. Where do you think all this money comes from to do this stuff? Uh, so basically they have their billions of dollars that they need to do all their research and technology and their huge skyscrapers and everything that's required to have a world-class business that can compete with the rest of the world. Now, let me ask you this question. Somebody who's in maybe the lower lower class of people financially, what do they do with their money? Well, they buy some chicken nuggets at McDonald's, they buy a six pack of beer, they buy some cigarettes, they pay for their Netflix, they buy the latest iPhone, uh, and then they play the lottery. And then they stay poor their whole life and they don't understand why. And it's like, what, it's really obvious why. It's because you don't do anything with your money. And so this idea that, oh man, it's bad for the economy for billionaires to have billion, billions of dollars. It's like almost the other way around. The reason they're billionaires is because they're so good at using the money correctly and making the money grow into profits. And these profits, by the way, create a massive number of jobs, right? So the profits aren't created without first having somebody who has a job to uh, do the work for those, those jobs, right? So you like having a job, I like having a job, and you don't work for people who are poorer than you. You actually pretty much only work for people who are wealthier than you. Uh, and that's because those are the guys who take the risk of the investments and then they go create a product, they innovate. Uh, and of course, if it fails, they're the ones that, that lose. You don't lose, you just do the work. Uh, but they take the risks and they pull out the investments and uh, they wake up in the morning and they work for like 16 hours a day. They work, almost always work more than the actual workers, right? The business owners do. And then they get paid at the end of the day, and then they take that money and they invest it in the stock market so that they can earn more, and so that the companies that they made the investments into have the capital that they need in order to make even more money. And if you are smart with your investments, then you uh, pick the right companies uh, and you efficiently allocated all those funds. So that's what this is all about. And it's like the idea, Andrew Yang's like, oh man, if we could just give single mothers $1,000 uh, a month, it's like the economy would be so good. It's like, what are you... Everyone knows that that's not true. Oh yeah, single mothers make way better financial choices with money than billionaires. They just don't. That's why they're single mothers. Because they don't make smart choices. Or, you know, they date some loser guy because, I don't know, they're not capable of seeing he's a loser. Or they have unprotected sex because they can't even be asked to put on a condom or something. Right? Or the, the guy they're having sex with can't be asked to put on a condom. And here's this billionaire genius, and it's like, yeah, we definitely need to take his money away and give it to this other person. Oh man, I think there was a donation. Symphonia! Low class donates to... <laughs> How's it going, Symphonia? Symphonia, are you voting to put my optionals in a peach yay or in a peach nay? How's it going, Symphonia? <laughs> Symphonia, if you're in the low class, I am too, actually. I'm very poor. <laughs> I, I'm still broke paying off my student debts. I had to turn this volume up. I didn't even hear that, man. I'm still broke paying off those student debts. But someday, I hope to retire 60 years old. I'll be some old fart. Nobody wants to touch my dick. And I will hopefully be a millionaire. And I'll take care of myself. And you guys won't have to pay for my health care at that point. If I did it all right. Help me quit my job, please, says, that's not true, man. Sometimes two people just aren't good together. Uh, yeah, so they need to detect that before they have babies. <laughs> if you're not good together, don't have babies. Wait till you know that they're good together. Uh, let's see. The wealthy are certainly important to an economy, but a millionaire successful businessman is on a different plan plane of existence from a billionaire. Somebody who finds emojis great says, also terrible. Way. Peach, yay. Oh, man, my optionals are going straight into a peach. They are impeached. <laughs> Glavinus. 
That's a lot of damage. Vladimir, the only one who can save us is Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin's up to something. I don't fully understand it all. He is trying to make some constitutional changes to the presidency, uh, which he's the president right now, and I think he's nerfing the power of the presidency before he steps down from being president. It's very interesting. I hear that he's trying to stay in power, and I heard that his entire like cabinet or something like that, everyone in a certain political body in Russia, all stepped down from their position so that he could make these constitutional changes. Uh, so I'm, I've am i been reading about that, but I don't really quite understand the impacts of it all or what his plan is. Uh, but man, yeah, he's been in power a long time. He's, he's pretty iconic for Russia, I would say. He's going to be remembered for a long time. He's going to be in the history books for sure. It's not going to be like some small chapter. He's going to have a big chapter. See you later, somebody who finds emojis great. Sion says, are you on benefits? I have, I am not on benefits, and I've never been on benefits, and my family of 11 children were never on benefits either, even though we we're basically living in poverty. So no, I do not take government money. Well, except for the student loan, but I, you know, that's a little different. You pay that money back. Abdallah says, when you become a millionaire, please get me a Unified Minds booster box. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Could you, the Symphonia says, what did I vote for? Uh, you voted to put my optional quest in a peach. So my optional quest, so far the, the vote is 23 yay to zero nay. So I would say my optional quests are looking like they're going to be in peached. Could you explain the peach stuff? Yeah, so uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, after delaying for a while, she's finally submitting my optional quest to the Senate. And the Senate is going to vote whether or not to put my optional quest in a peach. It's okay to not hate Russia. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I feel like Russia's been like these James Bond bad guy for the American government for so long. Believe it or not, regardless of what side I was on at the time that Donald Trump was campaigning to be president, it was actually kind of refreshing to hear him say, what if we just got along with Russia? I was like, yeah, that actually sounds kind of nice. That would be great. Oh man, this guy's crazy. Look at this. Wow. Alright, there we go. Good. You're going into the wall. Oh, he turned around, damn it. Oh, that sucks. Who's your ideal candidate besides Trump? Uh, I actually, for the Democrats, even though I don't like him very much, uh, I think that their best guy right now, and he's, it's so funny because he's not even popular in the group, um, is Michael Bloomberg. I think Michael Bloomberg is actually the Liberal Party's best option. And I think that Senator Warren's too old. Joe Biden's way too old. You, I mean, so, so hear me out. Whoa! For the heavy packet, Cynthia <laughs> Thank you so much, Metalax. That's actually very, very generous of you, dude. By the way, what do you vote? Yay or nay for putting my optionals in a peach? Man, that's a very generous donation. Because uh, that would be about $75, I think. I think. Right. Did I, did I misread it at all? Now I'm trying to remember what you... Because part of that's... Uh, so, guys, he's, he's purchasing some cards, but he's also making a donation. For the heavy pack and Cynthia. Oh, you're paying for Cynthia. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. So now it makes more sense. And um, it's not a $75 donation. It's a... Uh, how much was Cynthia? Was she like 79 I don't actually remember. Russia has been games Bond, uh, James Bond bad guy in Hollywood for way longer. Well, almost 90% of games from USA have some Russian dude as the mastermind. I know, right? Like, what is the deal with that? It's so unfair. You lost me on that one. We would have to say goodbye to our Second Amendment rights with Bloomberg. So, uh, hear me out. I didn't get to finish my statement. Joe Biden's too old. Bernie Sanders is too old. I absolutely despise Senator Elizabeth Warren. Sorry if I'm offending anyone right now. I think she's awful. Uh, Pete Buttigieg, actually, 
he might be my second. It, it would probably be Michael Bloomberg and then Pete Buttigieg. Those would probably be my two. Um, I don't like Klobuchar either. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think who else is in. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Klobuchar. Klobuchar definitely doesn't even seem like... She doesn't even seem presidential. She seems like a manager at Target or something. Uh, let me think. Who else is in the race? Oh, definitely not Andrew Yang. He's straight up racist pol politician. Whoa! Get that case of monster energy <laughs> I will literally buy a case of monster energy and I will show you in the Discord. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I'm trying to think. Michael Bloomberg, Pete Buttigieg. Those would probably be my top choices. I would not vote for... Elizabeth Warren, uh, Bernie Sanders, and Biden. Actually, Biden would be my top choice if he was about 10 years younger, I'd say. He would be my top choice, easily. Um, Andrew Yang, no. I don't think who else. That, that's about it. Pete Buttigieg and Michael Bloomberg. I would not vote for Tulsi. Tulsi, I think she got popular on the internet. Uh, Andrew Yang kind of got popular on the internet, too. I know Ethan and Kila have Andrew Yang on twice now, and I thought that was fun. But it's like, it doesn't mean I'm going to vote for him. <laughs> Argena says Yang is racist. Yang is actually very racist. When he comes in and he says, I'm good at math because I'm Asian, that's an extremely racist stereotype. Uh, and there's two parts to it. First of all, it's, it's not, I mean, it's just, it's, I don't know how else to say it. Like, so what other stereotypes do we want to talk about? Do we want to say blacks aren't good at math because they're not Asian? Like, it's, it's just such a racist stereotype. It's really bad. And he's allowed to get away with it because it's not like a white stereotype or, or some negative stereotype or something like that, but it's, it's a racial stereotype or something, right? So uh, I consider that extremely racist in principle, even if it sounds funny the first time you hear it, the more you think about it, the more you realize what it represents. Uh, and he just does it openly because, <clears throat> I don't know, we've never had to deal with it before, I guess. Nobody's really thought about it very much, right? Like Cory Booker, is he good at math or is he not Asian enough? It's really ridiculous that he got away with saying that. Uh, and I just actually do disagree with the thousand dollar Yang Gang thing. It's just a different form of socialism to me. One that hurts innovation and technology, by the way. By saying tech technology can't earn as much money as it's worth. I mean, Asians got tiny pee. What? What are you guys talking about? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Asians have huge pee pee. Anyone saying small pee pee is going to get. Have you seen their index fingers? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's not white, so according to the progressive movement, he can't be racist. Well, precisely, but that's the thing. What he stated was actually extremely racist. You know, let's say you were an Asian and you weren't good at math. I mean, that statement hurts you because it's like the stereotype says you're supposed to be good at math. And even positive stereotypes like that can be very hurtful for people. Uh, here's another one that we make like, oh gosh, black people have like huge dicks, everyone. Once you go black, you never go back, right? is actually is, is a stereotype and it seems like a positive stereotype, but imagine being a black man with like a small penis, how that must affect you. It's, it's probably horrible, actually. So I'm just gonna come back and be like, actually, there are no black men with small penises, they don't exist. But uh, no, really, think about it. Don't, don't just laugh at what I just said, but actually think about it for a minute. It's actually kind of, uh, it's a positive stereotype, but it's at the same time, it's kind of not that good. If stereotypes are bad, that's the whole point of racism. That's the whole point of pointing social justice out, when when you make a sweeping stereotype about people and it actually hurts them. So you have this positive, supposed positive stereotype about Asians that they're good at math, but it's like, so if the positive stereotype sticks, does that mean we can conclude all the negative ones are true too? What about the negative stereotypes? Are we allowed to use those if the positive ones are true? See, and so this is why I call him a racist man, is because you're not supposed to be using racial stereotypes to make a political argument. It's so beneath, you know, it's, it's, it's just really, really not clever. It's something I would expect probably somebody like Donald Trump to do, actually, to be honest with you. It, it's just not a very intelligent move. And he does it and he gets away with it because, I don't know, we, we laughed at it when we first heard it. But think about what it really is. Think about what it really is, guys. Let me marry Mary for a Sylveon. What? Big index, very big PP. Exactly. Women prefer average penis size. Big hurt them. Wisson has just revealed that he has a tiny PP. Russell says has he's super racist. Super racist. But just goes on TV and says racist shit because he can, because he's not white. Everyone would date Mary. Can, would we all? Can all the cringe in the chat end, please? Absolutely not. Uh, Zigotten says, you're correct. Yang is the only third best option. Bernie 2020. <laughs> People love Bernie so much, but he just had a heart attack. 
He just had a heart attack. Hello. He just had a heart attack. That would be the, the beginning of his term. If you're a Democrat and you're clever, you would not be voting for a president, uh, a candidate who just had a heart attack. I, I don't think that that's clever at all. I would I would immediately prop up somebody younger uh, or, or somebody in better health. Either of those two. I like Joe Biden, actually. I think that Joe Biden represents what the left used to be. And he's even changed a lot, by the way, to, to represent the changes, the progressive changes in the Liberal Party. But the way he used to be, the way the Liberal Party used to be, you know, there's there's times where I disagree with them, but, I, you know, I, I feel like I'm still sort of comfortable with them. And he's changed a lot just because his party demands it, but he's just too old. That's all it comes down to. He's very old. Uh... Uh, you know, that, that probably sounds ageist. It's just true, though. His teeth were, like, falling out in one of the debates. Did you guys see that? His teeth were falling out. Like, holy... I can never get enough of TGC streams, but one should ask themselves. <laughs> What's life without oh my God, Mary. so beautiful like Mary? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, vote Mary for precedent. For precedent. You hear that, Mary? You're going to be voted on for precedent. <laughs> Marry for precedent. <laughs> Vote now. <laughs> Thank you so much, by the way. Um, gosh, Metalax and uh, uh, Albasam as well. Gosh, you guys. I'm going to add your names up here. Metalax. Let's see, is there an H at the end of that? Or is a... Hold on, let me look it up real fast. Oh, I'll just go by your last name then. I was telling you the other day that I realized I was calling you by your last name because it has a good sound to it. It's got like a catchy sound to it. Giratina says, um, didn't Teddy Roosevelt have breathing problems and shot and still was president? No, actually, he was like 24 and he was totally fit and he was doing parkour. I am precedent. Hey, Mary, can you give me just 50 random Pokemon? Yeah, Mary, could you do that? That would be great. <laughs> I loved Joe the Walking Dead. He really... He really nailed that part. <laughs> what? Biden is a documented pedophile. Do your research. Oh, no. Is he actually? All right, I'm going to do my research live. Are you ready? Because I, I, I feel like that's one of those conspiracy theories. Joe Biden. Um, pedophile. I don't know. No. What, what did he say to do research on? Documented pedophile. Okay, we're going to type in documented. Give me one moment. Catholic priest denies Joe Biden Holy Communion. Blah, 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 blah. No, he, he refuted it because Joe Biden supports abortion. Uh, why are right-wing conspiracies Joe Biden and Hillary 2.0? Yeah, I mean, it, I, I would argue that a small search on Google you think would reveal a documentation that he really was a pedophile. Probably, I'm guessing, there's a lot of pretty good-sounding conspiracies suggesting that Joe Biden is a pedophile, but if there's not actual documentation, then... Uh, I don't know. It's like you can feel that way and you can you can definitely develop a case. But because uh, I don't think all conspiracies are necessarily always false, but I don't I don't make a conclusive belief one way or the other until there's enough evidence. So just calling him a documented pedophile, you're going to actually have to produce the documents. <laughs> I didn't see them. Where's the receipts? I need the receipts. Biden was a segregationist. He's a career politician. He's in bed with Wall Street and he'll do... What is wrong with Wall Street? Wall Street's terrific. God, people hate Wall Street so much. Wall Street has been turned into this evil bad guy with a long mustache. You realize your grandma and your grandpa are invested in Wall Street. Grandma, everyone who's invested is invested in Wall Street. Wall Street made America powerful. From poor me Whoa. with love, From poor me with love. Aw, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> That's uh, Siritis? I don't know. Siri ITS. I'm probably saying your name terribly. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Um, but again, w uh, Wall Street, where do you think you invest money? You think you invest money in, uh, I don't know, name me another street. Like, 
Elm Street. <laughs> I'm thinking of scary movies. But no, seriously, where do you think where do you think the average American invests their money? Yeah, so there's guys, there's hedge fund managers who become billionaires because they spend their whole time managing people's money and investing money. And guess what? You know why they got wealthy? Because it turns out American companies do nothing but grow. Uh, and over a long period of time, the economy, even though it's had recessions, even though it's had depressions, is done nothing but grow. If you look this up, the, you know, Wall Street from the beginning to the end to today is done nothing but grow exponentially. Tons of money has been made. And so there's money managers who do nothing but manage money and they get paid really well. And it's like they're doing something you could do right now. You could go to school right now to be a fa financier. You can go to school for finance. It's, it's like encouraged that you go to school for finance. If you told your parents, mom, dad, oh, okay, I had the frostbite. He got me right away. If you told your parents right now, mom, dad, I'm going to school for a degree in finance, they would probably be like, okay, that sounds pretty good. And they would be right. That would be a terrific degree for you to go pursue. Uh, and then you could spend your whole life investing and becoming wealthy. Uh, but, you know, every average person is invested in Wall Street. You've got to stop turning it into this bad guy with a top hat and a mustache. Because that's what the politicians have told you to feel about Wall Street. Oh, man, Wall Street's out to get you. It's literally what's giving everyone a retirement fund so that people who actually saved up money don't have to beg for you to pay for their health care at the age of 70. You should be thanking Wall Street for existing and making America a powerful country unlike many other countries that don't have a Wall Street okay like you want to you want to get rid of Wall Street yeah you could be just like one of those countries if you really wanted to you can be like them I wouldn't want to I would want to be in a country with Wall Street it's so silly I, I feel like I don't know I, where does all this where does your information come from about how evil Wall Street oh it's so evil that people make money so what do you want to do? Live in a, uh, it's, it's like a hippie thing or something, right? Like, ah, oh, hippies hate money. It's like, but then you realize money's awesome and buys you sea dues and a nice home. So what do you want, man? Freaking evil Wall Street. God, I hate it that people make money. So, what about you? Don't you want to have some money? Don't you want to go out and, and earn money with dignity, create a product that people love, and uh, be paid to, you know, money for... Uh, well, that's one of the earliest things you learn about finances, is that the reason money is made... This is one of the earliest things you can learn about finance. The reason money is made is because somebody sits down and becomes an expert at making something. This was like the father of economics. I can't remember his name. Was it Adam? Uh, it was Adam something. I can't remember. I could have sworn Adam was in his name. And he writes a book, The Wealth of Nations, and he realizes the reason money is made is because you work on a product that you become an expert in. You make it better than anyone else. You make it so well that the cost of making it goes down because you're such an expert at making it. The cost of cost of going uh, making the product goes down so much that now when you sell it, there's like excess money to be made when you sell it. That's that's all of business. That's, it, it, basically, what it says is when people are making profit is because they're solving a problem for society. It means when people are making a profit, they're contributing to society and uh, making something that others enjoy, right? And the financiers are the guys that make sure that the companies that make these products have the capital that they need in order to uh, invest. Uh, and these people who are actually sending money to Wall Street are your grandma and your grandpa. People who are smart and they know how to invest for their retirement. They put their money in Wall Street. Oh, God, the guy with the... He just interrupted my... It doesn't matter. We got yelled at anyways. We got roared. Uh, but yeah, it's your grandma and grandpa. If your grandma and grandpa are wealthy, which I hope they are, because then you won't have to pay for their health care, it's because they invested in Wall Street. That's what they did. And uh, you got to stop treating it like it's the criminal with the top hat and the mustache. It's far more complex than that. And it's some oily politician telling you that they're the bad guys when they're not. They're like one of the best things about our country is Wall Street. Adam Smith. Thank you, Shadow Khan. That is his name. The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith. Go ahead and eat this. Adam Sandler. <laughs> Adam Sandler, the father of economics. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who has a wealthy grandma and grandpa, what they did was they took their money and they put it in Wall Street and it made them wealthy. And now you don't have to pay for their health care. And when you get older and they pass away tragically, they leave you and your family a gift. Uh, behind to take care of your college needs and to take care of your children is is the best thing about living in a first world country is the fact that we have a 
a vast financial network of people who want to invest and people who want to see the economy grow and uh, you know m money managers who get paid very well to do this but that's because it's such an important valuable job and anyone can go do this job there's not like a caste system India has like a caste system that they're still trying to get rid of is is that correct so we don't have like a caste system you want to go be a wealthy financier go be a wealthy financier stop crying about it that somebody else got up and went to school and did it Go do it yourself. You could be wealthy. There's no rules against it. And when you come back wealthy, be sure to donate a few dollars so I can have my Monster Energy drinks. Game Economist, stop turning Wall Street into Cindy Whiplash. What? <laughs> yeah, it's like, eh, the evil criminals on Wall Street. <laughs> and, and they've got their little twirly mustache. Eh, <laughs> we shall take all the money from the, uh, what are the terms again? Bourgeoisie and the proletariat. <laughs> They're not doing that. They're just money managers. <laughs> They're taking your, your grandma and your grandpa's uh, retirement savings and investing it for them so that when it's time for them to retire, they actually have some money and you don't have to pay for their cancer, right? That's, that's amazing. That's how everything should be all around the world. Most of the problems would be solved if people could spend less than they earn and invest the rest of that money. And invest it well, hopefully. Because some people make poor investments, but that's just... That's just part of life, actually. It's not every, not a lot you can do at that point. Yeah, you kind of have to know what you're investing in. People be like, I'm tired of all this motherfucking money in my motherfucking Wall Street. <laughs> if Wall Street went bust and disappeared out of America, America's economy would collapse. That's a fact. You're, if you think that punishing Wall Street is great for you, literally every job you have is connected to Wall Street. Like, uh, you think I'm I'm immune? My job is from Google. Google exists. They're a Wall Street company. If Google went bankrupt, you think I'm going to be making YouTube videos anymore? Google's going to be like, we can't pay to run this server anymore for all these YouTube videos. We can't pay people to make YouTube videos anymore. My job goes under. That's it for me, right? So you, you hate Wall Street. You literally hate everyone's jobs. That's, that's how connected it is. It's the same thing. But it's like these... Oily politicians are trying to get you so badly to vote for them. They have to have a bad guy for you to rally against. Ooh, Wall Street's evil. They're so evil because they have more money than you. That's it in a nutshell. And you've been like duped. You've been tricked into it. It worked. That's the worst part. It works. It works. That's the future of politics is uh, turning people into little haters, I guess, who don't take the time to think about how closely related all of their grandparents' success and your success and everyone else's success is tied directly to your friend, the people at Wall Street. The people at Wall Street who, you know, move funds around and make sure that the money that is needed to operate a business is available. It's like the difference between living in a first world country and a third world country is Wall Street. A small tax on Wall Street transaction is not punishment, it doesn't hurt anyone, and it benefits millions. Uh, there is always a cost. So uh, if you're trying to make an investment, see, this is this is another fallacious idea that, oh, yeah, we can just take money from people and it doesn't matter because there's a lot of money. No, that's just you doing very easy logic rather than having to think about it more. There's a lot of countries you can invest your money in. OK, so there's these people and they're, all they do is invest money. That's all they do. They're experts at investing money. I mean, they, they do it more than I play games. Probably they're probably that good at it. They invest their money all day because there's real money involved. I play games and I do it for fun. They invest money, and there's millions and billions of dollars involved. So they're probably better at investing money than I am at Monster Hunter right now, right? And when you change the rules so that now you have to pay uh, taxes uh, to be even higher on American uh, investments, what do you think actually happens? Here, I'll tell you exactly what happens, because that's why I'm here. So what happens is an American investor with maybe a few million dollars to invest says, all right, who are we going to invest in? China or America? And the investor, who his broker says, well... Take a look at this account. Remember, we were talking about accounting, right? Accounting is really important. It says, look at the accounting for these companies. They're very similar, actually. And in this case, you pay an extra 10% taxes, which for uh, $5 million turns out to be a massive amount of money. So what ends up happening? Uh, the person who had the millions of dollars to invest decides to invest in a Chinese company rather than an American company. Why? Because you thought that it didn't matter to add a tax to our uh, Wall Street, right? Because the Wall Street guys are all bad guys. They're all criminals with uh, twirly mustaches right so adding that little tax you thought it was harmless and it turned out it, it actually had a massive impact on where money was allocated in our economy so I, oh it doesn't matter it, it so matters it matters so much 
this gonna be it? I think this is it. One, two, three. Politicians want votes, and there's only so many ways to make people that aren't at all super smart to vote for someone. Controversies are one of the more fun. Yeah. Well, I think dividing people into, like, cults and groups, identity groups, has been one of the major innovations in politics. Basically, the politicians discover that we're all stupid enough to vote uh, against each other um, in order, because we all feel threatened by each other. So you feel threatened by the wealthy people because you've been told to feel threatened by the wealthy people. That is essentially what has happened. Nice. Well, look at that. I stopped him with the pod, and then we immediately captured him. That was so close. That's some teamwork right there. <laughs> Shoot. That's some teamwork. <laughs> I'm selling news now, I guess, says Mary. Oh, how much are they? That's too expensive. <laughs> Didn't Playboy, like, go out of business? I think Playboy went out of business. Whatever happened to Playboy? Who's old enough to remember Playboy? I remember Playboy. Now you go on the internet, you can see anything you want. For free. For free! That is the business model of the adult entertainment industry. Playboy out of now. business? Let's follow wherever it's headed. How much is the Playboy brand worth? According to the company, $1.5 billion? Whoa. Playboy Enterprises is an American privately held global media and lifestyle company headquartered in Beverly Hills, California. So they are still in business. They're privately held, though. You can't invest in them, that means. It was founded by the late Hugh Hefner. The company is structured with two primary business segments, media and licensing. Ooh. Whoa, I haven't heard Playboy be relevant in a long time, though. How are they going to turn a profit if people don't care about the brand anymore? Playboy Entertainment, Playboy Online, Playboy Licensing, Playboy Lifestyle in India. What? As of 2007... The publishing division of Playboy accounted for 30% of the revenue of Playboy Enterprises. So it's still making money. Whoa, whoa, no, no, wait, wait. That was 2007. Dude, that was 13 years ago. You gotta be careful with that. Whoa. In 2018, less than a year after Hugh Hefner's death, his estate sold its remaining Playboy shares of 33% worth $35 million to Icon Acquisition Holdings LP. The money was split between Hefner's widow and his four children. I didn't know he had kids. I suppose I should have known that. Damn. Playboy Magazine. Whew. They do have naked ladies in that, though. I'm old enough to remember Hustler and Penthouse. Yeah, I remember those too. Russell says, Ganon, you just need to stop, bro. You get torn apart every time. What? I'll commit toaster bath. You better not. Abdallah says, oh, is Logs here? Logs, I have a, a package of Pokemon cards to ship out to you, but I don't have your address. You need to contact me on Discord and give me an address to ship them to. All right? Yeah, I got to have your address or I can't ship them. If you sent it to me in the past, I might have lost it. I get that many messages in a day. Two thousand seven was thirteen years ago. Wow, I feel old and I'm eighteen. I know, right? Time moves fast. It does not change either, by the way. Time's always gonna move fast, so start investing your money today, man. Start uh, thinking about your career. Start thinking about if you want kids or not, uh, marriage and all that stuff. Do it ahead of time because by the time it's time for you to actually do those things, you want to have a big advantage. Oops, I didn't mean to roll out like that. Hold on. Yeah, do it early. Do it early, and then when you're older. You will just relax. Everything will be sorted out for you. That's smart, right? Locke says, sorry, man. I'll do that tonight. Oh, no problem. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you can just contact me privately on Discord and tell me where you'd like the cards to be shipped. So, wait a second. We gotta go to the hot springs. 
Yeah, they're up here. Okay. What's today, by the way? Oh, it's Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday. Sweet. So you guys ready for my wife to do the live stream? She's going to be doing the live stream soon, right? There's a rock to collect, right? Is there not? I forgot how to do this one. Are we waiting for a rock to arrive? Is that it? Oh, here it is. Hot springs. Where'd it go? Oh, it's right here. Hot springs stone. Help! Oh my god, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> Cute doggo, help! Flash him or something. Cute doggo's like, nah, I'll just watch. Cute doggo, you flash him! It's okay. And we made it into another area. I don't think he chases any further. Mary being a trap is a theory of mine. Oh. <laughs> Salacious theories about Mary. <gasps> I didn't drop it, did I? Oh. Oh my god, thank goodness. Oh, two people already got it. Nice. Good job, guys. No pro transporter? I'm disappointed. I'm too lazy for that. <laughs> Suppose I could've. Pornhub is where all my investment goes. Eyes. What? Can you invest in Pornhub or is it a private company? Pornhub investors. Things you didn't know. Oh, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a publicly traded company. I'm reading about it right now. It's a private company. Whoa, and the company who owns all of the major porn sites is running a monopoly on the porn sites. Huh. And nobody talks about it because nobody wants to talk publicly about the porn companies. Whoa. Politicians don't come forward and say like, we're gonna regulate porn. Whoa, that's so interesting. Ah, see, we should have been in porn the whole time, guys. Hey, look, we only have a few people this whole time in the... So, we are at the two-hour mark. Um, I think we'll do a bit more, though. We're going to do a little bit more and keep talking. I invest time in protein to Pornhub. What? Another player used a voucher. How's it going, Parker Riggs? Everybody search up. The spun yarn says nice. Closest thing I've done is lifeguarding. I attempted to join the G CG, but flunked out of basic. So, I will be right back. I'm going to go... Um, actually, here, I'll hit the depart button. I'm going to go leak the one-eyed lizard. I will be right back.
Whew, here we are. Oh my god. Okay. Let's get started. So, who are we fighting? Azura Rathalos, the guy I don't want to fight. And we'll jump up here. Are you guys excited, by the way, for the Pokemon card stream today? Oh man, we've got five more medium packs to sell. And when we sell those medium packs off, we're going to open up all of the Team Rocket boosters. It's going to be really exciting. But we still have five of those medium packs to sell off. I might buy one myself, actually. If nobody else will buy them, I, I'll probably buy them off. I might buy one or two, I don't know. It, it's a gamble, actually. It's a gamble. Do you think Trump did it? What? Do I think Trump did what? <laughs> Where am I supposed to be going? Oh god. Sorry, GE, I'm not into poker monos what? Pokemans? <laughs> You're not into Pokemans? Dude, I got the PSA returns yesterday, and after the cards had been professionally graded and returned, uh, in, in terms of value, I made probably close to about $500 on that PSA return. If I sell all the cards off, though, I have, I have a number of cards to sell off. We'll see if they sell. They should sell. I already had somebody ask me if I would go lower on the price on eBay, and I basically told them no. Uh, but, you know, that's... We'll have to see if somebody else makes an offer as well. If they don't, I'll contact that guy again and tell him I'll go lower. Oh, man. We broke his tail and that ended the, uh, the KO knockdown. Do you think Trump is guilty? Um... No. <laughs> I don't know. First of all, I don't think he's guilty of obstruction of Congress. I think that's a totally made-up crime. Uh, the bigger question of whether or not he was asking for a quid pro quo with Ukraine is a more difficult... It's a more difficult subject. I feel like here's the best argument for the Trump team, basically, is that let's say he was investigating something uh, that seemed legitimate... I feel like that is actually not such a big, crazy thing. So, gosh, it's such an annoying subject to talk about, honest, because it's, it's kind of very boring, actually. The whole issue with the Ukraine deal, the problem is you actually have video evidence. Keep this in mind. You have video evidence of Joe Biden saying that he was going to have force Ukraine, basically. He was going to force Ukraine to fire their attorney, their state attorney or whatever. And if they didn't, he was going to withhold funding from Ukraine, okay? So he does this very publicly in a video. And then what Donald Trump says is, uh, could you look into Joe Biden? And the reason for this is because Joe Biden shouldn't have done that. Uh, and his son conveniently works for the company that the state attorney was about to look into. Joe Biden's son works for that company. So if anyone's corrupt, it feels like it would be Joe Biden actually, and I would be, now that he's moved on to the Senate, the whole impeachment trial, I'm curious to see if they try to ask for Joe Biden or Joe Biden's son as a witness or something. I, I have no idea where it's going at this point. Um, but I feel like it's it's just not something worth impeaching over. Like, what, what they probably could have done with Donald Trump has been like, he broke the law, guys, he's a terrible guy. Uh, but they, I don't think the Democrats should have gone for impeachment. I think the impeachment has pretty clearly gone in the Republicans' favor. Uh, he's not going to be impeached. We already knew he wasn't going to be impeached because the Senate was never going to vote for him to be impeached. And at this point, I would say Nancy Pelosi is kind of looking like she's going to probably lose control of the House. She, If the Democrats continue to have control of the House, at the very least, she won't be the Speaker anymore. They'll vote for somebody else in their party to be the Speaker for the House. So that's my perspective of it. I think they could have gotten him in trouble, but not gone for the impeachment. I think the impeachment was always a losing position for them. Mary's like, I want to be in prison. Game economist for prison, 2020. 
That's my hot take. Are you guys ready for my hot take? I'm so enlightened. Here's my opinion. <laughs> I want to drop this. Oh my god. <laughs> Mary drops the soap in prison and uh, her fellow prisoner just picks the soap up for her and says, here you go, and just hands it back and that's the end of her whole dramatic story. If Trump can be impeached over this, then Obama, Bush Jr. and others could have been impeached too. Yeah, well that's the, that's the argument from the Republicans. So the Democrats think that this was definitely, um, you know, him withholding money from the Ukraine's uh, Ukrainian government until they dig up dirt on Joe Biden, just create dirt. But it's like, maybe it's not a case of them having to dig up dirt at all. Maybe Joe Biden actually was corrupt in Ukraine. Uh, and then it becomes a, kind of a trickier subject, right? Like, what if he actually is being corrupt in Ukraine? What if, what if it actually was Joe Biden who had the quid pro quo? saying, you don't investigate my son, because if you do, I'm going to withhold fundings, right? So I feel like that's all part of this. I've cons I've considered some of the things I've heard from the Democrats at the very least. I'm going to make a cahoot on you in a second. I don't know what a cahoot is. If you've got hammer hunting more pals in the party, cut off the tail first, then the monster is down. Oh, I see what you're saying. Try not to interrupt the hammer players is what he's saying. One, two, three. Oh, and he's gone. They should have impeached him over uncongressional offensive military action. What are you, you're talking about the thing in Iran? Uh, I don't think, I don't think anyone's going to agree with that. A lot of Democrats actually said it was a good thing for him to have taken down Soleimani. Did I say his right name right? Soleimani? Um, I just don't think that that's going to happen. Uh, because I think that too many people on the Democratic side actually agreed with the death of this guy. Uh, I think that... What happened was the liberals immediately accused him of escalating us into a war, but we're actually not in a war. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Acidic Lab made me look like I've never touched a controller before. He sure made me look like a fool. Oh, did he wreck you? Joe Biden is irrelevant at this point. Joe Biden is a boomer. Joe Biden is a career politician. He's definitely corrupt. Anyone in government that long has to be corrupt. Well, if you believe that, then you also believe that Joe Biden... Uh, I'm sorry, uh... Bernie Sanders must be corrupt as well. So, you know, consider that for a minute. A lot of people, the reason they like uh, Bernie Sanders is because of how consistent he's been. Soul a many. Soul a many. I've had the game for a week and just the just got through Barrieth. I don't have enough time. Any more Cosmic Eclipse pack slips? Asks Abdal al -Bassam. Yeah, um, I have a whole booster box of them if you want them. Yeah, we could do the same thing we did yesterday if you'd like to. Apexing says, I think acidic glavinus is easier than normal glav, to be honest. Acidic glavinus is easier than normal glav. I kind of agree. I like acidic glavinus, actually. He's kind of fun. Shortest World War III ever. <laughs> well, I think part of the reasons why we pretty easily avoided World War III, the crazy part is, by killing their general, I think Donald Trump kind of showed everyone that he's not gun-shy, first of all. But then he also used really kind of threatening and awful language. He's like, we'll go after your cultural sites. That's like what you would expect a terrorist to say, basically. And But it showed you he's like crazy, okay? And the, the part of it is, I actually believe him. So when Donald Trump was like, we'll just blow up all your stuff, I think he was actually telling the truth. I think if they then did some damage to America, like if they actually, uh, if Iran actually did something relevant something terrible in retribution i think he actually would have gone out after all the cultural sites and just blown everything up that's the thing and so it's interesting by being this aggressive by being this kind of horrible person i think he might have staved off the possibility of having this work because the iranians have to sit there and be like is he bluffing and i don't think he is like uh, you know, obviously I live in America. I'm not really worried about getting hit by a missile from Iran. So I'm just sitting here thinking about it. I don't think he's actually bluffing. A lot of the things he's done is whenever he says he's going to do something, he actually just does it, right? So he says, I'm going to do this. I want to do that. And then that's exactly what he goes after doing. Um, yeah, so interestingly, why would you want to have a war with the United States when they have so much... We're like famous for having so much military shit. Too many bombs, right? It's like, well, uh, we could have a huge I see I don't think he would want a, a ground invasion or anything at all I think if Donald Trump actually had a war in Iran he'd just be like just bomb bomb the shit out of him I don't even care if we kill a bunch of people
That's probably, I feel like that's probably what he would say. He's like, no Americans are going to die. We have a million bombs. We're just going to blow them up and no Americans are going to die this time. And I'm going to be remembered for that. That's probably what he would have done. And I think that Iran probably knows this. The Iranian government probably knows this. That he's very aggressive and doesn't give a shit. And he's, I don't know, just kind of an awful person. Do you have a level 100 Darkrai on Pokecord? And if you don't, you aren't Chad. I don't. Iran was the bigger man over this, saying that they would never target civilians. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone wants to be targeted. Civilians in particular don't like that. He would have rained down hell on Iran. It wouldn't have been a good thing. Promises made, promises kept. Except the stuff he said during the campaign law. You think they would shoot their own people, but not ours. Man, I hope we get that update that fixes performance soon. I do too. Where do you go? Is he down here? What? I got roared out of the air. I'm horrible at fighting Ebony. Ebony, all you need to all you need to do with all monster fights is let them attack first and then you punish them. That's that's the essence of Monster Hunter. And always roll. <laughs> if you're not rolling all the time, it's because you're not rolling enough. Where'd he go? TGC is a beta male. <laughs> beta. <laughs> oh my god. Return. Uh, what is it? Forgive your mother and return to your father. <laughs> oh, he's down here. I don't think anyone wants a war in the Middle East. The conservatives don't want it. The liberals don't want it. Um, I don't think anyone wants it. And I hope it stays that way. It's not good for the economy. It's a waste of money. Blowing up bombs is a waste of money, by the way. It's great if you are in uh, if you're into investing in, in bombs, but if you're not invested in bombs, it's not good. Do you have a take on the recent Warren Sanders issue about a comment made in 2018? He's talking about uh, Elizabeth Warren uh, claims that Bernie Sanders said that a woman couldn't win election in uh, the next presidency or whatever, the next uh, election. So that's what he's talking about. Elizabeth Warren came out and she said that Bernie Sanders said a woman couldn't win. I think it is very, very, very obvious, because I'm pretty sure Bernie Sanders pretty much been a feminist his whole life. I think to me it's very obvious it's possible Bernie Sanders said something like off color or something like that. I highly doubt he believes that a woman couldn't win office. I highly, highly doubt that. Most likely this is a calculated move by Elizabeth Warren to rally women and feminists onto her, onto her side. That's almost certainly what this is. And it's a very dirty move. And it's actually, it's stupid because it's like, it's Democrats using their own tricks on each other, right? So that's, that's one of the calling cards of the Democrat Party at this point, is to call you all the names. You're a racist. You're a sexist. You're a misogynist. You're a, you know, they've got a lot of ists and isms for you. Uh, you're, you're privileged. You're, um, what's another one? You're nationalist. You're, there's so many isms and ists. So this is a calling card of a, of a liberalist to accuse you of some sort of identity label that they've created for bad guys. And they're using it on each other now. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is that desperate to win that she would even bring this up. Like, why bring it up? Somebody explain to me why bring it up. And I will tell you why it was brought up. It was brought strategically by the Elizabeth Warren party to uh, damage Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, one of the most milk toast guys I've ever heard of. The most milk toast guy ever. And she's claiming, oh yeah, this is, he's a misogynist. I think it probably backfired on her a lot. I think that she probably lost a lot of supporters when she did that. And uh, actually, I think it might have helped Bernie Sanders' face. Uh, so at that point, you would probably put a conspiracy together that maybe Bernie Sanders' team leaked that to the media. Wouldn't that be interesting? What if it was Bernie Sanders' team that, that made the claim? But no, 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 no. She would have said, no, I never said that. So it had to have been her team. Never mind, never mind. Yeah, it definitely would have had to have been her team. Did you guys know Bernie Sanders is actually a sexist? I knew it. I knew he was a sexist. Imagine living in that party. Jesus Christ, man. 
he doesn't believe women can win. It's like when you were a little kid and you heard that song, Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Better. Anything you can do, I can do better. Remember that when you were a little kid? That was like a girls versus boys uh, sort of song, right? You would sing that to make fun of the girls, and the girls would sing it to make fun of the guys, right? It's like the Democrats never moved out of that. They're still totally into that. They're still stuck on that. They're like, oh, yeah, oh, you hate us. It's like, oh, okay. But, you know, it's politically valuable for them to say that, right? That's the whole deal. It's politically valuable. It actually works. People take pity on you. People look at the guy that's been accused and they're like, oh, man, he's a sexist. We got to stop that. Yeah, so I think in this case it's going to backfire because she used it on one of her own. You know, you're not supposed to use it on a Democrat. You're only supposed to use that on the conservatives. Use it on Donald Trump. Kaiser, I don't know what you're doing, Kaiser. I'm going to mute you. I do not know why you're giving out codes, but I don't think you're supposed to be doing that. Dude honeymooned in Russia during the Cold War. Who does that? What? Are you talking about Bernie Sanders? <laughs> Been great sword user ever since I first played Monster World. Now I use Longsword too. Common sentiment is that all Bernie bros are misogynist. Why? Because they don't want... Want to vote purely based on your gender, question mark? I know, right? That's the other thing. It's like, oh, you better vote for Warren Sanders because she's a woman. It's like, oh. <laughs> that is, I don't know. It's the low low IQ people. <laughs> you have to vote for Hillary Clinton. She's a woman after all. You don't want to betray women. That's exactly the sort of poor decision making that would cause your country to lose status in the world, have a failing economy, and lower the quality of life for everyone. That's a really stupid thinking. And it, it's kind of like, that's that's when social justice clearly steps over the line, clearly. You should never vote for somebody on what their genitals are. It's absolutely ridiculous. But the Democrats accuse conservatives all the time of being sexist, and then they go around like hypocrites and actually do it themselves. Don't, for, you know, Donald Trump's a misogynist. Also, you need to vote for Hillary Clinton or else you're betraying women. So hypocritical. It's, it's like shockingly hypocritical. But it's like if you can't see that that's hypocritical, why are you voting? You're just so dumb if you don't see it. I would hope that you would be smarter. You the moment the moment you hear it, your your ear should pick it up immediately, and you should be like, "Frick that, dude! Why do people get so stupid?" Betraying women. Imagine politics. Imagine voting for the leaders of your country based on what their genitals are. Oh, no. Oh, no. I haven't a clue when he does... I haven't a clue what he does with his money, but I don't have strong feelings about millionaires the way I do. Billionaires. Is that where you draw the line? Billion? <laughs> it's a lot of money. <laughs> but again, I, that money is in the Wall Street, man. That money is invested. I'm actually fine with it being invested rather than being invested in power cards, right? I'm going to invest all this money in power cards. I'm going to buy another pair of Nike sneakers with all this good money. That's a waste. I like people who buy, spend their money on like stocks and stuff like that. They're, they're doing a good thing. Why don't you believe that? We don't even believe that you're female, Mary. Wow, she's so female. I can prove it. I only vert for Benesis. Benesis? Well, and you know, there's probably some guys that are that way as well. And, uh, you know, it's, it's equally as wrong. So when the Democrats say, you know, you shouldn't vote for a guy just because he's a guy, uh, that's a fair thing to say, I think. But it, it goes both ways. You shouldn't vote for a girl just because she's a girl. It, and uh, I think the Democrats kind of break that rule all the time. They're huge hypocrites on that issue. And, uh, you know, when you kind of realize that they're being sort of two-faced about it. It uh, changes your perception of them. It's manipulators. Bernie Sanders is a sexist. I knew it! I knew Bernie was a sexist. <laughs> Can you imagine Bernie saying something like, grab him by the pussy or whatever, right? <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, snap. Let's hear another roar. We need a third roar. There's this thing when a volcano eruption makes static electricity. It's called volcanic lightning. Look it up. It's really cool. Oh, neat. The tax code is set up by the government to control all of us. If these people running for president really cared, they would advocate a simple flat tax. Uh... Yeah, I don't really agree with the flat tax, to be honest, but, um... Yeah, I don't agree with the flat tax. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I would like it if, uh, all sales tax was removed. I can tell you that. Like, get rid of all the sales tax, get rid of the employer's share of, uh, the, uh, income tax for your income, so that you can see what you're really being taxed at. I would love that, actually. Get rid of the licensing fees, get rid of, um, sin taxes, get to sin tax. Get rid of... Oh, it's computer sounds right now. Get rid of uh, the fuel tax. Get rid of all these taxes and just have it be one tax that comes out of your income uh, so that you can actually see what you're being taxed at. You can actually see what you lose. Uh, you would realize your real tax costs are close to 50% of all your income. It just goes to the government. It's not like 30% like you probably believe it is. Or, you know, if you're not making a lot of money, it would be smaller, of course. But yeah. People don't realize how much they pay in taxes because they don't think about it. It's, the government very carefully divides it all so that you don't see it all. You pay sales tax every time you buy an item. There's a sales tax. You pay property tax on the home and the car that you own. You pay a tax every time you need a license or any other, some sort of other legal document that the government forces you to have. Um, you pay... Uh, I was just talking about this issue that a lot of people don't know about, so I'm, I'm just going to say it again anyways. You pay income tax, and then your employer pays the other part of your income tax. So your income tax is divided between what you see and what your employer sees. This is your real income tax. So instead of paying you more money, what's happening is the employer quietly pays part of your income tax for you. The government requires them to do that. It's absolutely outrageous. You don't realize it because nobody, somebody has to tell you that it's a thing, and then you can go look it up. Uh, so the government, the real taxes that the government takes from you is much higher than you realize because you all you look at is the tax brackets uh, for your income level and you're like, okay, I pay 27%. That's not so bad, right? You don't realize just how much you really pay. It's, it's an enormous amount. It's already an enormous amount. The government takes all your money, goes horribly into debt, and then tells you it needs more money. It always needs more money. Hi, I'm the government. I need to spend your money for you. Of course it always needs more money. That's because they tell you when you're voting. Oh, man. Vote for me. I'll give you more money. <laughs> Vote for me. I'll spend more of your money for you. And the people are like, oh, wow, I like this politician. He spends money. <laughs> that Well, that's our grandma and our grandpa, by the way. That's what our grandma and grandpa were dumb enough to vote for. I'm voting for this guy. He's going to give us social welfare programs. What, in your opinion, is a good income? I feel like my wife and I are doing well, but with inflation in comparison to what I thought was good when I was young, I think it is not. Uh, you know, uh, I think a lot of it depends on how much you need in life to be happy. I think some people can get by on, like, 30000 pretty reasonably. Uh, but if you live in California, you're not going to get by reasonably in thir with 30000 I live in Missouri. You could probably live off of thirty, forty thousand 40000 and live very comfortably and invest and actually retire. Uh, but if you're living in California, you're not even going to come close to that. So that's part of the equation is not just how much do you earn, but where you live. And then what do you actually want? Do you want to own sea dues on the ocean? You're going to need more money. So $40,000 a year isn't going to be enough for you if you want to live in a, with the, the sea dew on the side of the ocean. You only get one life, right? So you only live once. So set your goals high on what you want to experience in life. Tell yourself you deserve finer things in life. And then set off to go make that money. Always put aside some of your money, you know, always spend less than you earn so that you have a retirement when you're an old man and your wife's an old woman and needs your help. Imagine your wife has cancer and she needs your help and you didn't earn enough as a man. That's like pathetic, basically, to just be straightforward. She should be able to rely on you to be able to take care of her. So anyways, decide what you need to be happy and what you need for your retirement. That's that's why I would say. And then, like I said, if, if you live in a place like Missouri, 40000 you could actually live off of rice and beans your whole life and uh, 
retire with a million dollars and be able to pay for everything you'll ever need and probably have some left over to go on a cruise, right? But uh, if you want to live with some nice luxuries, like, oh, nice, I just got wrecked. If you want to live with some nice luxuries, like being able to travel, uh, go traveling with your wife, or, uh, you know, if, if you want to be able to do nice things, you're going to have to want to earn probably in the $70,000 range is what I would say. $70,000 is solidly in the middle class. You can buy a nice little home, have a few kids, go on a vacation once a year probably, and still retire. So 70000 at least. And honestly, with all of the whole, oh, we're going to raise the minimum wage, blah, 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 right? You probably want to aim a little higher than 70. I would go for like 80 and 90 even. Um, but not everyone has to earn like $120,000 a year. I think that's uh, quite a lot. Also, be careful with like education for your children. Like set some money aside for them when they want to go to college so you don't have to pull out a student loan for them. And then just tell them, look, I paid for your, I, I paid for your loan to go to college. You're off making money. You better help me when I'm older and I need your help. Just tell them that. And they probably will. They'll, you know, because as it turns out, if you have children and you're dying of cancer, it's, it's very hard for your children to say no to helping you with your cancer. I, I've just been in that position with my wife. It's like, even if you don't like your parents, it's very hard to say, no, you're just going to have to die. I can't help you. It's very hard for children. So, so you know, save some money up for their college education or for whatever it is they're going to need money for. Help them out. Be smart about it financially and then just tell them, look, you're going to pay me back when you're like 40 and I'm 70 and I need help because I, you know, I put all my money into a college fund for you. And make sure they go for the right degree. Tell them to go for a finance degree. <laughs> Don't tell them to go into communications. Tell them to go into finance. Communications is big poo-poo. Uh, finance is big money. Everyone mad at the finance people for making all their money. It's like, well, you should go into finance. It's like, it's barely even different. It's like a little more math involved, and it's not even the complicated kind of, well, some of it's a complicated kind of math, but uh, you know, that kind of math pays big bucks. If you just want a very basic job in accounting or something like that, it still pays really well. My PP, AK, what? P performance. PP means pecker. PP is PP. PP is peak performance, guys. My wife and I live comfortably in Florida, and she was offered a job in California to have the same standard of living like we do in Florida. Her salary would need to be like 300% of what it is now. That's accurate. If you wanted to live in California, you would need to increase your salary by a pretty heavy amount because of the cost of living out there and the cost of housing out there, which is just crazy. Just crazy. California right now, you know, it's funny. They're like a sanctuary city. They should be like the opposite right now. They should be like all the homeless people that are coming into our state from other countries and other states in the union can all frick themselves they're all out of here no more homeless people for us we're tired of paying for the homeless the homeless can go live in a cold uncomfortable you know city or whatever if i was you know if i was in charge in california that's exactly why i'd be saying i'd be like get lost you don't you don't belong here if you can't pay for a home sorry i know you like california we do too but you have to be able to afford enough money to live in california if you can't afford it you move on that's how the world works you don't have a right to live here and have me pay for your shit. And uh, I, I, I don't know. People just don't believe in that anymore. People are like, oh, I'm poor. You're rich. You have to pay for my stuff now. That's, that's how people think the world works. But it's like it only works that way if you can force them to pay for your stuff, which is exactly what voting for a socialist system does. You you force somebody who wouldn't, wouldn't want to give you that money in the form of charity. You force them to give it to you. And then they decide, fuck this. I'm going to another country with lower taxes. That's exactly how it works. They go, I, I'm going to move away from you. Although people could argue, oh, they won't move out of California. Oh, yes, they will. They'll go to Texas. <laughs> they'll go to Texas and have the beach anyways, and they'll have uh, completely lower taxes. And then you, your, your state will just be full of the homeless people, and Texas will be full of the millionaires. So it's a competition even among states, not just countries, but uh, even among the states. It's a competition. Come on, you. so hard to roll that. When's the card economist going to make an appearance? Uh, very soon. We're at uh, two and a half hours of the live stream. I think uh, we could wrap up after this uh, match in particular. So let's let's aim to start the next channel right after this. How does that, how does that sound? You always use sea in your example. Do you want one? Lol. Uh, I think it would be fun to own a sea or a boat or anything. I actually love uh, the ocean and water sports, but you know, if I can't afford to live by an ocean, I could live by a lake or a river. That would be fine too. Um, I think that people who live by the ocean probably lead healthier lives in general, and I do want to lead a healthy life. So 
My wife likes the idea of living by the ocean as well, but we live in Missouri. We have the Missouri Ocean, which is a nasty, muddy, cold river where you die if you go swimming. So that's what we have right now. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll move out of Missouri someday. We've thought about moving to North Carolina, by the way. For those of you living in, uh, those of you living in the United States, if you want to live next to the ocean at a reasonable cost with fewer hurricanes uh, than Florida, than what Florida deals with, you have North Carolina. North Carolina actually has pretty affordable beaches. It's, it's further up north, so it doesn't get hit by quite as many hurricanes. So you, you don't have to worry about them quite as much. So, And the cost of living in, uh, particularly Wilmington, is where we were considering moving to. The cost of living is actually still affordable enough that you can buy a reasonable home. And my wife and I, we have a suspicion also that because more people will realize how nice Wilmington is, if you buy a house in Wilmington today, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, when she and I are old farts, um, the value of our home might have doubled or, or gone up even more, depending on whether or not Wilmington becomes a place that uh, invested a great deal in industry and in the housing industry as well, and especially. Oh, he just shot those. Okay, let's go ahead and capture him. But we don't know. We might end up staying in Missouri. You can actually own like a McMansion in Missouri. You can own like a mansion home in Missouri at a very reasonable price because nobody wants to live here. So we've thought about doing that too one day. Game Economist has the largest index. That's right. My, my index finger is so large, it like reaches the moon. You can come to Oregon, but all the coast is public land, so you can't live like right on it. And the water is cold as frick. That's right. So my wife actually considered, my wife and I both considered Washington State and Oregon. Uh, but two problems. These states were too liberal for us. We don't like uh, living in states that are like hardcore liberal. We'll accept like a split, like a 50-50 split. We don't want to live in a hardcore liberal state. And uh, we also, because every time it's a hardcore liberal state, there's always all these crazy problems. High crime, uh, you, you live with high crime, high taxes, and, uh, you know, what else, what else am I trying to think of? There's usually these particular problems that are associated with living in a, oh, the, the state is usually in a, a great deal of debt because the state typically does a lot of welfare programs. So when you're talking about New York, you're talking about Illinois, you're talking about like California, these states, they have very high debt, they have higher tax rates, and uh, they have a, a higher rate of like crime and, and overcrowding and everything else. So we, we kind of want to live in a place where it's either conservative or a split. And uh, the other problem with Washington and Oregon is you don't really get to go swimming in the ocean very often. They do have an ocean, but you don't get to go swimming in it very often because it stays too cold. Uh, North Carolina, that's not true. It actually has a warm season where you can go swimming for a while and it's really nice water. So yeah, North Carolina's on the list. South Carolina's on the list too. Actually, one of my friends moved out to South Carolina, so we've considered actually maybe just going and moving next to them. He's like an old friend of mine. Just live in Switzerland. That's right. My wife and I would move to Switzerland in a heartbeat. Everything about Switzerland is very much like our personalities. We like folksy areas. We do love the mountains. We love nature. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the live stream. Wow, I talked a lot. Let's go open up some Pokemon cards. We've got some mail. Has the mail arrived? I'll have to go check and see if the mail arrived before we get started. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you guys the wave. And I will set up the next stream. And then I'll leave a link to it when it's ready. And then we'll shut this stream down. Okay, guys?
Okay, so let me go ahead and fish up that link to the next live stream. Let's see if we can find it real fast. We might be opening up the rocket booster packs today. I can't guarantee it though, because I was wanting to sell off the medium packs. I feel like the medium packs lose value if we know what's already been pulled from the heavy packs. That's the problem. Okay, so here is the Pokemon card live stream link. There you go. Let me go ahead and send it out on Discord as well. All right, and I'll go ahead and send it out in my main Discord too. Wow, I do a lot of live streaming. I stream for about five to six hours a day now, I would say. Okay, so all the live stream links are out. Uh, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this live stream. Thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.